Dreaded flag of vengeful sea, be careful what you say. There's always someone listening. The Dutchman tossed on the sea, I swore, and the devil heard me. Now we're doomed to sell the seven seas for eternity. So, yo, ho, let the ocean. Across this 
face Said you'll be doomed to this place The devil heard my oath Shame of my boast Oh, a ghostly ship from the depths Freedom from fear Is the only gift of death your eyes you'll join us like those before we're an omen of the ocean night when you see the flying judgment it's too late for your soul to the waters we gave now Okay, all right, folks. Look at this. Look, what, what what is going on with this? What is this? somebody somebody said that I was overly concerned about my appearance. You could not be more wrong. 
my wife has to tell me how to dress sometimes. She's just like, you know, just try. Just try, you know, just. And I'm like, what? I'm wearing a dress shirt. She's like, you're also wearing warm-ups. <laughs> I'm like, it's cold outside. And you're wearing flip-flops too. Okay, now you're just nitpicking. Now you're just going to pick out everything that I'm doing wrong and keep bringing it up. Okay, all right. This is like the time I pooped in the utility closet. I thought it was a restroom for the last time. And the yellow bucket, I thought it was very primitive. I mean, that's plumbing in there. Well, it was. I thought it was a very primitive place. And Close so I just enough. figured that they didn't have their, 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 their stuff together. No pun intended. I mean, that's a... Their S together. <laughs> I mean, th to be fair, that is like a, a fancy toilet in a, in a third world country. Yeah, so. exactly. And it was a third world restaurant. So I thought yeah. that that's what was going on. But Nelly just kept keeps on about it. Oh, okay. So what we got going on here, we were going to wait for Tony to give us... Tony loves to play. He, he won't be here. He'll probably be here for two hours in and stumble in or whatever. Yeah. Oh, my shoulders. Oh, my gosh, dude. Uh, so we have a, a full lineup of, of stuff to talk about tonight. We got a, a strange, weird stuff like always. But let's first, let's say this. It's Easter. It's Easter Sunday. And I told you I'd be here. We, you know, we didn't. I don't know. The last couple of years, I don't know if we were on Easter or not. I don't think we were. I don't think but so. um, we we are this year, and it does seem kind of like everything all week is just kind of leading up to the Sunday show. Yeah, like the Sunday show seems to be the big one that everybody, you know. But being Easter, we didn't know if we would, you know. And I thought, well, there's going to be a lot of people who aren't going to do a show tonight or whatever. No, they're doing it. They're doing it anyway. Um, but they'll probably chastise us for it. They'll be like, look, heathens, evil, evil. They are doing a show on Easter. They're like, you did too. Yes, but we believe exactly the way the Old Testament says, and he does not. He believes in other books that were taken out of the Bible in some thousands of years ago. You're like, that was in 325. Whatever, time does not matter to us. It does not. Nothing, even, nothing Jesus says even matters. What matters is what our piety to you. And they're like, oh, okay. And then they continue to watch. <laughs> watch as I throw up this rock. It is Bigfoot. <laughs> uh, uh, we serve, uh, what does it say? Melissa well, says, I, we serve I ri risen Savior. A risen Savior. Yes. I think that's what you're getting at. He is risen. Uh, made a post on Facebook earlier, and so many people got butthurt about it that I had to take it down. Um, it was yesterday. It was up for about two hours. And every millennial on earth came after me, screaming, yelling, waving their flags of multicolors. <sighs> Look, folks, I don't care how you slice it. This is Easter, okay? Not gobbledygook, whatever... Human humanism, transhumanism, right day. Okay, it's never going to be that day in my household. Never, ever going to happen. Gross. Okay. It's never going to happen. I'm sorry. I don't care. I don't care. People don't like it and leave. You know, I noticed. So there's there's people here in Austin. Like you'll give them a card. They'll watch the show one time, and then you see them again. You'll be like, you watch the show. They're like, yep. And then they they don't mm -hmm. talk. To you. They they will not talk to me because they see it's from a Christian slant, and they get aggravated they get very po'd and then they won't even talk to me again i'm not even joking mm -hmm. and so then you're just like okay well then we'll just shut that door the wicked flee when none pursueth but it's always uh millennial type people or zoomers that, that are highly agitated by what you know so then i gotta catch it on that side but then i catch it on the on the fundamentalist side too because i don't preach i don't preach the way they want me to preach first of all like i said before if you want to hear preaching go to church I'm not here to preach to you. And then they go and they gossip to everybody that'll listen. Oh, you know, oh, he just not a, not preaching the word. You know, it's like, I'm not your preacher. I'm not a priest or a cleric. I'm not a rabbi. I'm none of those things. I'm not a monk, Shaolin, Benedictine, or any other type of monk. If you want that, go find it. But you can read my shirt here. It says, do you see what it says? Read it. I'll just show you. 
It says, for those I love, I will do great and terrible things. Read it again. For those I love, I will do great and terrible things. It's a Crusader shirt. If that offends you, leave. People are going to be offended on both sides regardless. I had a guy who's a fundamentalist. He's Islamic. Um, I don't know if we're still friends. Hmm. Um, he messaged me uh, uh, Friday. Did not like things that I was saying. Probably didn't like what I was saying Saturday either. Sorry. I mean, you know, I'm not really sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Sorry you feel that way. Yeah. But that's pretty much it. It's just the way it is, man. What is going on with this little patch right here? What the heck is it? They don't even notice most of that stuff until you point it out. I guarantee yeah. you they don't notice half the thing half the stuff you notice about your head. What, my head? Yeah, by your hair, by your head. Like, whatever that is. I, this is bothering me. I don't care what everybody else thinks. I'm thinking, because it's like, my hair has got like, if you can look at it, it's got reddish and blonde in it. Mm -hmm. Because my dad's side of the family, there's a lot of red and blonde haired people. <clears throat> and my dad had a lot of red and blonde in his beard, and I do too. I found um, like one red hair in my beard the other day. It was weird. <laughs> really? Yeah. But on my dad's side, you know, we have, you know, so... Like my hair will grow out. When it grows out, it'll be like dark, and then it'll be it'll have little weird blonde hairs in it and red hairs, and um, yeah, it just looks weird. I don't know. It just comes out weird. And uh, my whole life, one side was always more blonde than the other, and I always wondered about that. And I thought maybe it was, the, the, but it's weird. It's the, it's like it's the this side right here. So mm -hmm. I thought maybe because I'm driving, like maybe the sun bleaches Probably. it a little bit. So, because that's not like a, uh, that's not hair. I don't know what it is. I'm weird, right? I got rid of this, though. This is, my wife gave me some stuff, started putting it on there, and it was it started going away, the little scuff on my elbow, whatever. So, thank you for everybody that sent me a thousand messages on how to get rid of that. I appreciate that. Uh, now, I don't care. It's part of being human, right? We're humans. That's what we are. We're not vampires, you know? You know, uh, everybody's talking about this prominent rapper who's in the news right now and getting in trouble. And I made a comment to somebody and they got all upset. I said, look, it's, and it's not just rappers. You know, I mean, the, the whole music industry is rotten to the core. They are rotten, rotten to the core. All of them. Mrs. Kaka. She, she's one. They spirit cooking. Yeah, trust me. And the other one, one, I don't want to say their names, Beatty Berry, we'll just call him that. Piddly Poof, whatever, he's in trouble. JX, he's going to be, you watch. It's going to come out, Jello, watch. Bianchi, all of them, <laughs> every one of them. They, they they all need to, I'm telling you, the whole, and, and not just that, but the actors too. And I have some friends that are actors. I mean, I'm not big on actors um, for one reason. Because you're playing a role. And they're like, oh, he's a great actor. What does that tell you? That means he's a good yeah. liar. You can never really trust that person fully. Yeah, well, they could be giving you a bowl of crap with their emotions. You don't know what the hell they're doing. Good actor, but not somebody that you, I mean, should you trust him? You know, the Romans used to have... Uh, well, actors were considered like low-class low people lives. for a, They were the low-lives. They did not allow singers or, or actors. And whenever there was something that had to do with religion ceremonies, they would have a guy that would stand out there, hear ye, hear ye, you know, and then they'd be like, free men, actors, singers... Not allowed. Yeah. May not attend. May not attend. Because once you went down that road, you were considered a piece of crap. I'm not saying this is what I believe. I'm saying this is what they believe. This is what they did. This is how they were. Exactly, Gore Lord. They were considered the lowest of the low. Yep. Foul entertainers, as they were called. Some of the greatest men of Rome looked at them as complete trash. I'm not joking. And some of those men could even be considered a little bit liberal. But they were like, no, no, no. 
Because, you know, everybody has to have this posh British accent if you're Roman, you know, on TV. Yeah, for some or reason. the transatlantic accent. We didn't look like those people. Like, they didn't talk like that at all. But uh, they would have been like, no. Can't do that. Can't allow them to attend something important. They'll muck it up with their dirtiness. And pretty sad considering these people slit bulls' throats for sacrifices. <laughs> you know, did all kinds of crazy stuff. But they, they were like, oh, but at least we're not actors. <laughs> at least we're not yeah. at least we're not on the stage we're not lying to everybody we'll wipe we'll, entire we... tribes off the face of the planet but at least we're not actors what does that tell you <laughs> I mean you know playing around with skits and stuff like that I think everybody should have a sense of humor I do it and I, you know but but like going out there and being a I don't know man I guess too it depends on how that person came to be an actor you know, I guess that's that could ma matter too. I don't know. Charles V says, "Yep, hookers, actors, and dancers, not considered to be good people by many civilizations. The Persians didn't look at them as good people either. The Persians very, very much um, believed like they were the Zoroastrians, and of course, people don't want to hear this, but." You know, the Israelites were in captivity to them for hundreds of years. And then when they came back, you don't think that they absorbed their beliefs? That's where the, the monotheism came from. You think I'm kidding. Oh, it was before that they were monotheistic. Yeah, but they didn't write anything down about it. They didn't write anything about any of their beliefs. It was There was no written anything until they came back from captivity in Persia. Think about that. So all of their history prior to that was an oral history, an oral tradition. I know because I've talked to multiple rabbis who say that, and they will tell you the first written text came six, around 600 BC, shortly after their captivity in Persia. And it's funny that, that they don't take their own Old Testament as, as serious as, the, as Christians do. Um. It's their, it's their history. It's their scripture. It's, it's basically their uh, history of whatever and their literature. But Christians take it as like, this is the gospel. That's not the gospel. The gospel is the gospel. There's two different things. But how dare you tell the truth? They want to believe something that's just like, those are laws and, you know, Old Testament, it's archaic stuff that was, you know, Jesus said the old way is done away. And then they always counter with, well, he said that the old way was done away, but then he, he didn't want to take away from the law. He wanted to, whatever. And you don't have to. He didn't have to. I don't mean the King James Version, Pancho. No, no. I mean the New Testament. That The New Testament. King James Version is a very uh, cut down book. Um, that has very, it mostly, it, even the Catholic book that was cut down in 325 in the Council of Nicaea has more than the King James Version. They have the Book of Tobit and other stuff, um, you know, stuff that you wouldn't recognize if you were a Protestant. But it's funny because the Protestants are always beating their chest about, you know, not all of them, they're just a, sec a section of them, the, the fundamentalists. They beat their chest about the Bible, 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 you know, but they don't even know it. They know this book that was put together that they called the Bible. And it was just thrown together by people. I mean, it's the truth. And there's a bunch missing. And it's been misinterpreted. And then they also do this whole editing and redacting and rewriting. It's been rewritten multiple, multiple times. And uh, that's my problem with it. I think that we should all, um, you know, be looking at this. But you have people who go around attacking me because I, I say that. They say that I believe that the Anunnaki created us. You know what I honestly believe? I believe I don't know. I believe that we are totally ignoring the Gnostics who were the first Christians. They were the first Christians. You know why I know this? Because I know history. And I'm not going to sit up here and lie to you. And if I thought I was like leading you down the path to hell, I wouldn't be saying this. But this is the truth. And the truth is the truth. And there's a lot of people in this community. Well, not really a lot, but a few. And they're very loud and boisterous. 
They get on the phone and they call everybody one by one and tell them, don't, don't listen to that guy. God, that's what they do. Stirring up deceit and all kinds of craziness, hate in the name of God, in the name of Christ. That's what they do. And here on Easter Sunday, most people that consider themselves Christians, and this is very important. I'm going to say this before we get started on the, on the story. We've got 300 now. We're about to get started. Most people who consider themselves Christians don't know. They don't know the truth. They're blind. And then they go into a shell. They turn around. When you tell them the truth, they turn around. They walk into it. So they cannot hear it. I feel compelled. I felt something today. I was I was leaving the gym. I went to work out today. I did Easter yesterday. But I was like, you know, nothing going on today. So I went to the gym. And I just focused while I was working out. Just, this was what I do. I wasn't thinking about the show. I wasn't thinking about any of the stories I got to tell. Nothing. I thought about God. I thought about Christ, the resurrection. This is the day to do it. If you're going to put a day on it, which I don't do that really, because you should do it all the time, every day. I pray a bunch every day, all the time. Now there are those that go around saying that he doesn't even know who he serves. They sound like Sadducees and Pharisees, don't they? And I said, oh, I know who I serve. I serve the Father of Christ. I cling to Jesus like if there was driftwood in the ocean and it was my only hope. That's all I do is cling to him. And I ask for answers. And when I was driving home, I felt this wave of energy over me. And I thought, and as I got in the door of the house, I felt it even stronger. Almost like a conviction. It was like, people need to know. So if I cowardly sit back and don't say anything, like I was advised by somebody, who's a friend, I guess, I don't know. They told me not to say anything about it. Just don't talk about it. And I'm like, really? That's what I should do? Because that's cowardly. I'm not going to do that. I'm not. I mean, I don't care what it costs. You have to tell what you know to be the truth. And, and not, I'm not talking about this is my truth, how these, these idiots hmm. do what they say is their truth. Your truth is basically saying, oh, you're saying you're, it's a lie, is what you're saying. You can be tolerant to a degree. But at some point, exactly, the truth. Christians have been, I think he's trying to say quiet long enough. Exactly. At some point, you have to say, look, enough is enough of this. You know, I mean, it, today of all days, it needs to be heard. I mean, this is Easter Sunday. And I got to tell you, it's not correct. Christianity has been turned on its ear. And a lot of these people that are preaching the word, you know what they're doing? They're towing a line so that they stay tax exempt because the powers that be want them to say a certain thing. And if they go out there and they actually told the truth, our government, and people can agree or not agree, let's put it this way, not the government so much as who, the principalities in charge. Like Jesus says, the principalities in high places, are they good or bad? Let's take a vote. The people running the world, are they good or bad? Say yes or no on there on the comment section. Tell me what you think. Because this is going to answer the question right here. Tell me, are they good or bad? Bad, right? No, no, both, both. You think they're both? Okay. Bad. Nope, nope, bad, bad. They're evil, bad, bad. Hell no. Okay, bad. So let's say that the consensus here, except for one or two, is that they're bad. They're very bad. Now, why is it if they're bad that they're okay with you as the church preaching a certain way, right, but not another way? If I started a church and I started talking about everything that the Gnostics taught, how quickly do you think I would get my 401c pulled? I know this because I know somebody that it happened to. Look, now it's bu buffering. Now it's buffering. 
So what happens if I were to start a church and I started preaching the true word and told people the truth? Who the true people of God are, people of Christ, what's real? They would say, you're not a church. You're not a church. That's not, you're not going to have that because you're not a church. By our made-up rules. So these are the bad people. And Jesus says that, that they're bad. He says that, right? He says it pretty clearly. But yet, they make the rules on what you can say and what you can't say as a Christian. As a Christian church. Think about that. That's all I'm going to say about that. Just think about it. And then you tell me who's right and wrong. You're smart people. I, have to, I think we have the, probably the smartest audience on YouTube. And, and podcasting, YouTube, whatever. It's, you know, we, the, the paratroopers are down. They are serious. We have had enemies come at us from every side, from every angle. I mean, completely just teaming up now, doing it again, teaming up to try to destroy us. I intercepted a, a thing that I'm not going to say any names or talk about it anymore. I'm just going to say this. It's not going to work. Oh, if we all work together, we can bring him down. So that means you get into bed with every type of evil that you can imagine. Because you, because what? God? Do you think God would want you to do that? And if God wanted me destroyed, it'd be done. Silly. Silly people. Doing things in the name of God. And behind closed doors, they're doing things that aren't fit for animals. Mm -hmm. And then you condemn me. A man who lives publicly. I don't hide. I don't do any of that crap. I'm not a weirdo. I'm not into any weird crap. You're not going to see me piddly poof, diddly do, whatever his name is. Oh, yeah. You know? Come here, little boy. You know, I'm not, you're not, it's not going to happen. It's not me. Unless they frame it on me somehow, but it's not me. I'm into that weird crap. I don't go and consort with people who aren't my wife. So what the hell am I hurting? Oh, you know what it is? Their fake pious sensibilities are being hurt. It's just the truth, and you don't like it. Every time somebody comes along and tells the truth, they get the tiki torches out and run them out of town. Building coalitions, uh, little armies. We all, come on, guys, it's all the freaks get together. If we get together, we could run him out of here, and he could shut up, and no more truth hurting our ears. Come on, guys. Let's all get together. Come on, fools. Stupid jackass hillbillies, let's do this. And any hillbillies that go along with him, they ain't hillbillies no more. We'll kill them. We're going to kill them rotten mothers. Crazy. Up there talking all that craziness. I believe in one Jesus, and that's the baby Jesus. That's the one I love, and I like him the most, and that's it. You ain't going to change my mind, Josh Turner, you evil-ass man. Because the baby Jesus don't tell me nothing I don't like. Baby Jesus can't talk. That's why they love baby Jesus. Let's get on the phone and let's start a crusade. Come on now. Look at the way he just drank that soda. Satanic if I ever saw it. Believing in them good Gnostics. Talking about they were the first Christians. They were killed by the other ones. That's why they ain't right. That's why they killed them. That's why the Romans did what they killed. They killed them all because they was they was wrong. Good old Roman Catholic Church. That's the one was right. Wait a minute. You're Catholic? No, I'm Protestant. Well, why do you read their Bible? I have no idea. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe because I'm dumb as a bag of hammers. And they'll tell you about this whole three days of darkness nonsense, which is, which is some cat, which is some Catholic prophecy. Dude. And then rail against the Catholics, like you don't even know how to hate Catholics. <laughs> Do it right. If you're gonna hate, what is this three days of darkness? Correctly. It's nowhere in Scripture. Nowhere. Yeah.
But, you know. And there's one passage that supports the rapture. People want to say that they're not going to be in it. This lady told me the other day, and she's a witness. She was a witness. And she says, it's not going to happen to me. I said, if you're here <laughs> and the tribulation happens, well, guess what? And she's like, well, that won't happen. And well, other than, then you're a good person. Then you're not going to be involved. You'll die before that. She's like, oh, no, no, no. No, I'm not going to die. I'm going to be caught up in the air. That's what happens to everybody who dies. I told her, I was like, I've been caught up in the air many times when I was out of my body. She's like, yeah, I've been out of my body too. I said, okay. You're going to be in it. If, if it happens, it happens. We are living in a time that you could consider to be the beginning of the time of sorrows. Say it too loudly. Run people off. They don't want to hear that. But I can say this, if you're here, when it happens, it was not by mistake. You were supposed to be here. That's how it works. And like I said before, thank you, Jamie Brinson, first donation of the net. Appreciate it. If you're here, then it was supposed to happen. I'm sorry. I really am. I feel bad to have to tell people that, but it's not incorrect, is it? I mean, you have to look at your life. When something bad happens to you, and I'm on, I'm on the side of the Buddhist with this one. I'm not Buddhist, okay? Let's not get it twisted. I'm not a, a zany zany, okay? Listen, they say you should always look at yourself because you did something. So, you're atoning. If you watched the show last night and you stuck around to the end when Starscream and, and Scorpion came on, I got a lot to atone for. I am not perfect. I'm a sinner. Um, not so much as I used to be, and I'm proud to say that. But damn, you know, I did a lot. I did a lot. So when something happens, I'm like, hey, you know, apologize to my wife. I'm like, look, you're with a guy who has a past. I got to make up for that. Thank you for that donation, Sugar Britches. Very, very kind of you. And Liberty. It is something that we all have to deal with. We all have to take a responsibility for ourselves and our actions. Tony's here. You want to say hi, Tony? Hey, everybody. How's it going? Ah, oh, yes. What is that? Your shirt mic was on. You're wearing. Huh? Uh, it, it's a shirt that. Uh, it's one of those shots oh, that Joe, Joe Breezy gave Joe to Breezy us. Yeah. Gave to, okay, I was sitting there looking and going, like, what is that? Yeah, I think he like, uh, I think he's like one of the people who puts on this this thing. It's like a horror movie convention or something. Mm -hmm. Great. Cult of death. Uh. Godless heathens what? all around me everywhere. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> sure. See, and that's how it happens. Someone starts thinking that they're so pious, and then they're looking around, they're like looking at their friend. He bought a hot tub. Hmm. He could have given all that money to the church. Bless you. Oh, okay. But how dare him and his wife enjoy... Anthony didn't say bless you. That's all I'm He's saying. He's not a pious man like us. I'm sorry. Yeah. I look down upon that. I That's... do too. I judge you. You stand in judgment from me. I am so good. I'm the goodest of all the goods. You know what I do? I give money to the poor. <laughs> Are you poor? I'll send you a nickel. I'm the most humble person in the world. I'm the humblest of the humble. No one's more humble than me. I gave a homeless man my last fries. I ate the others in front of him, but the last ones I gave him. <laughs> you gave him to Here, enjoy. Oh, God, did you see what I did? I fed the hungry. I had some old dirty shirts, and they were full of moth bites or whatever, but I gave them to the poor by dropping them off at Goodwill. Take note, God. I did this. Do you think that's how it works? You think God is just like looking at you going like, wow. And then, guess what? All the people who gave up their Snickers bar for Lent. Congratulations. You are really <laughs> killing it, man. I'm telling you. You know what? You're going to get a good seat. You're going to get a front row seat. Give that 10% to that preacher. He needs it. Him and his family. They need a new house. <laughs> Let all the enemies go and choke on what I just said. I don't give a crap. 
your fake piety. You know, but he ain't fooling nobody. Thomas Dave says, first super chat ever. This show is worth every penny of my small donation. I don't, nothing's too small. I've been getting camera equipment for my YouTube channel that I'm going to start here shortly. Good luck. Dana Dawson. This is why PRT is my favorite channel because of how real, honest, smart y'all are. We have all passed ex junkie here seven years clean in June. Hey, I talked about it last night. I mean, I, I wasn't a junkie. I can say that, but I mean, I did what I did. Me and Scorpion and, and Squid, uh, not Squid, uh, Starscream. Uh, Starscream talked about it. And you know, when you got guys who have nicknames like Starscream, Starscream, Squid, and Squid Wolf, <laughs> Scorpion, Diablo, Criminal. I mean, you. I mean, come on now, Knuckles. Al Capone. You know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got guys with nicknames like that. They're not. The nicest or yeah, proudest. You're not the get along gang. I mean, you know, and they love to point that out. They're like, he did, he did a say on his channel. He once ingested the, the mushroom. He took it. Saw visions of goofiness. What is wrong with this man? You saw Goofy? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. and look, he was he was so blasphemous. He said, What if the Old Testament isn't complete? <laughs> I went to church. Just to talk to my preacher. I haven't seen him in 12 years, but I went to church to talk to him about this man. And you know what he said? After I gave him a small donation, he said, this man is a bad guy. Then he said, I'm going to need about 350. He said, I'm going to need about 350. And then, boy, clean your boots off. And don't wear your overalls, church. Get that collection put around the other side over there. That's what he said. He said, you're a bad man. A bad, bad, bad man. He does not keep the Sabbath. Well, neither do I. But still, he doesn't. He's on his show on Sundays. So what if he bought someone some furniture or an icebox or whatever? Gadget. That doesn't make him good. He's vile. Vile man. He begs for money on his show. Have you heard him? It goes something like this. Please send us some money. Please, please, we need the money. Anyways, the audacity of me to tell you the truth. That there's more out there than just what we see. I guess, you know, are we mentally ill? Are we mentally incapable? That we can't, you know, like you, when somebody reads something, I don't know who does this, but if you read something, and this is going to tie into what we're going to talk about, do you take that and go, oh, I'm just going to read that one time and then that's it? I, you know what? I'm not going to go get a second opinion. I'm even going to learn about it. I've read that. That's it. We're done. I have learned it. I know this now. We are compl I'm, I'm complete. It's downloaded to my brain. The knowledge. I, I strongly encourage you. The cult of soy. <laughs> uh, I strongly encourage you to go and read more. And to figure out a little more about what you just read. Whether it's about politics, science, history. Well, I can't say math because math is pretty much math. There no second opinion. It's either right or it's wrong. Literature. And languages. Like, I was going around saying something I thought was in a certain... I'm not this is embarrassing, but I'll be honest. And I thought it was French, and it wasn't. And I was embarrassed. And I said, you know what? Stupid me. I didn't go back and make sure that that person told me the correct translation. And then I realized, I had to learn this. I was a younger guy, but I learned that French Canadians actually speak different than French people from France. They do. And then you learn that Spanish from Mexico is not the same as Spanish from Spain. It's Castilian. It's two different things. You, you know, you're, you're not the smartest person in the world. You have to figure these things out. And all I had to do was just do a little bit of homework and research and, and, and look into it. And I didn't. I was being lazy. And you know what? If you're a Zoroastrian, laziness is one of the worst things you could be. You know, you go to hell for laziness. Yeah. That's what the argument was about between me and my friend that's Islamic. I said something really mean, I guess. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. I said that 
Ramadan feeds laziness. And he got very upset by that. I wasn't trying to offend him or offend Muslims, but what I was saying is you have to kind of lay around and not do anything because you're tired, you're exhausted, you have no energy because you can't eat until night. And when I, t- I said the Zoroastrians, I was joking. I said the Zoroastrians oh, would have, you would be going to hell. And he said, yeah, that's why they're not around anymore. I said, actually, they are. There's about 100 to 200,000, anywhere between 150 to 200,000 of them in the world. But I said, your people killed them all because they didn't like what they were telling them. I said, and it spun off your religion. He said, no, it didn't. I said, yes, it did. Because your religion was spun off from Judaism. And Judaism, was that was the predecessor to Judaism. And none of the Old Testament, none of it was written until after they returned. Then people wrote about something that happened over 1,000 to 1,500 years before. Now, we said this before. How accurate is that? If, that, if, if when they returned from their captivity in Persia, that they wrote the, the Old Testament literally 1,500 years How accurate is that? You're going on oral tradition, and, and then if you're the one in charge, you're going to be tempted, as men are, to not write everything, you know, because you're going to be like, oh, I'm a priest. We need a little more gold. You know, you know, I mean, there's a temptation there. And the rabbis themselves don't even, I'm telling you, a lot, of, a lot of them don't actually believe it all. They will be the first to tell you. I'm not joking. And, but then there's these preachers that just say, this is the absolute word. The word of who? Totally ignoring the New Testament. Like it was like, this, like the, let's just forget about what Jesus, Jesus yeah, it's just like Jesus guy, but he keeps getting in the way of what I want to do. Which is what? The code of Deuteronomy? Because I think some people like the angry, jealous, barbaric version. They don't like the real God that tells you, hey, this isn't correct. And then they try to make all these excuses for the blood sacrificing. When Jesus came immediately, that ended. They, it wasn't before, it was, they said he was the last sacrifice. No, he told them already before that, hey, you don't need to do all this. The, he, he went, he traveled all over. And told him all that. Stop doing this. You know, he told the Brahmin priest that in India. There's records of this. You know why? Because people in the West are retarded. You're freaking retarded. They have records of him. Records of him in the ashrams, in these temples. He went to these places. He was there. And he told them, stop killing these animals. All over the Levant, all over the East, everywhere. They were just murdering animals and people, throwing them into fire and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And he said, don't do this. You don't need to do this. There is one God, my father. You don't need all this. He doesn't want this. Then he goes back and he tells them, he says, look, you're wrong. Your father is not my father. Your father is Satan. And you are of the synagogue of Satan. And they said, oh, blasphemer. Then they ran to the Romans and said, kill him. And then he, they said, are you sure? Yes, we're sure. Well, you're going to get a rapist murderer for that. We'll take the rapist murderer. Okay, done deal. Now we have Easter. But guess what? Three days later, he rose up and said, huh? guess what? I'm still here. And now I'm going to be a big pain in the butt of all the liars, fakes, and frauds for the next 2,000 years. And it's going to get me in trouble on Facebook because the millennials and Zoomers don't like what I said about Trans poo poo day. We're gonna make Easter. We're, gonna, we're not gonna have the Easter. We're gonna have the guy who's gonna come with this, this, this dude that was corn popping. He said, "Well, there's gonna be two kinds of people. It's gonna be male, female, but then there's gonna be one kind of people that's a female, uh, of, of a male, a male for male, and then there won't. There's you know, basically we're not gonna have Easter. It's gonna be this day. Multicolors and stuff. Then rainbow bright. What?" And then I get attacked viciously, but the, only in the way that they could attack people. The, they would say mean things like, yeah, my mom is big mad. She's just like you because it fell on Easter. I said, this is the first day of it, stupid. You think this is an every year? This has been going, you dummy. Okay. 
They're going to make up because it's one 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 letter or whatever they remove, and then they make another one, and then they make another day. And next thing you know, there's 364 days of transhumanism. You idiot. You dumbass. Read a book. Stop looking at your damn phones. I saw, dude, one of them almost hit me yesterday. I was at the gym. Just like, looking at the phone. Huh? And then I'm like trying to get out of her way. She's not looking. And then I almost fall over the incline. And then she's like, uh, like, like, put your phone down. Like you did something wrong. That's why you're still fat. It's like, <laughs> why are you wearing tights? You look like you stuffed mashed potatoes. Come on. I'm, I'm, bottom. Brand the coat says trans squatch. <laughs> Miguel, thank you for that donation. I'm just aggravated because it's Easter and now we're being told that it's not Easter. It's some kind of bull crap that they, that this, that this, what is wrong with this man? Who's up? Are you serious? And then they want to talk about the other guy that was there before. Maybe you don't like him. Maybe you think he's a bad guy, but I damn, at least we had money. And I said, ought, I didn't say, you know, cause I don't say that, but at least we have money in our pockets. It's the truth, but nobody wants to hear that. Let's just pretend. Let's all play play pretend. I'm not doing it. Not on Easter. I'm sorry. I'm not going to pretend. I'm not going to play with you. I'm not going to pretend. Because real is real, and that's fake. And I've had enough of it. Sorry. I'm just, you know, and I'm not sorry, you know, that millennials are not children. Go look this page up on Facebook, please. Go look them up. They are the stupidest. It is the stupidest crap. You you act like children. You're going to be treated like children. And then you had children, and you never should have bred. And most of them waited until they were like 35, you know, and they're all old. And, and I'm going to settle down now after they're all drug addled and tore up. Who the hell wants to settle down with you now? You're going to have children. You're going to, you're going to have kids? We're not children. You're damn right you're not children, but you act like children because you're freaking retarded. You're stupid as hell. You don't know anything. And then they talk about going to Easter church. You're going to go to church today? Well, congratulations. The one day out of the year you decided to go? I thought it was transhumanism day or whatever, the multi trans dimensional it's really been Rainbow re Bright Day. It's really been reduced to a social event. That's all it is. Honestly, like they just go there to socialize and be seen. Let's wear our Easter clothes. Mm-hmm. Why don't you do it every day for God? That you care about God so much, brother. You know, we got to serve God and good and kill him. Well, why don't you start living like it instead of spending all your time gossiping? Because that's what you're doing. Let's call up everybody and talk about everybody. Let's get in bed with people who do the most vile things you can possibly imagine. Because Jesus. Or really, it's not about Jesus because you don't care about Jesus. It's God. And you can't be a Christian without Jesus. Some of these Christians, they want to pretend like Jesus. Just put Jesus on the shelf. Jesus, Jesus is just in the, in the way. Let's talk about God. The God of the Old Testament. Judah Clay, dude acts like Alex Jones, and get the F out of here. I got it. Get out, Judah. Judas. Bye. Now that we got your attention, we got rid of the tail waggers. Let's get started. I was on my bandwagon, on my soap uh, box. Sorry, folks. It's all right. I mean... They're still going to stick around and watch even after they're, after they're banned, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, because they, they sit there and they're angry. They're not going to go away. They can't help themselves. They're too weak. And I know weak there's a willed. handful of you right now watching, and you're hating every minute of this, but you can't look away because I might mention you. And guess what? I'm not going to mention your name. I'm not going to mention your name. That's what you want. You want publicity so bad. You want to reignite that war. Because you're irrelevant and nobody cares about you. Your views are down. Mm, it sucks. And you're not getting the, the subscribers. They're going to have to go buy them. That's got to suck, doesn't it? Yeah. I bet. But, hey, you got that little cabal, those three or four piss ants that, that jumped ship to go because I wouldn't preach the word like they wanted me to. One of them, anyway. The other two pretended like they cared, but they really didn't. They never were. 
They were very secular. Until they thought they could get behind somebody who could stop me. How's that working out for you? Are people beating down the door to tell you their stories? I doubt it. Because I got about 15 of them this weekend. Do you need some? You can go. Let's see how well you read. You do it. Like Tyrone Bigham scratching his neck. I got any of them stories. Once upon a time, there was a guy. <laughs> Name was uh, Bubblicious Fish Eye. Uh, he went fishing with bubble Bubbles. His, his dog. The end. What happened? Bigfoot ate him. Next story. Anyways, folks, let's get to it. Okay? Thank you for that donation. It's the last day of the month. And, you know, and, and we, we've done gangbusters this month. And I'm proud to say that. I'm glad to say that. I'm happy as a clam. Couldn't be happier by the growth that we're, we're experiencing. Everything falling into place for us on the show. And it's making people mad as hell. But like I said before, Instagram, go to Instagram. That's where all the, the, the women are up there shaking their butts, whatever. That's where you go to see how many haters you have. And then you can brag. I got all these haters. Yeah. I got all these haters. They hate me because my booty's big, you know. <laughs> and one girl, she comes out. And this is the last thing I'm going to say, and then we're going to, I promise, we're going to start. And she's like doing this little dance routine, and it turns around and shakes her butt. And she says, I have to put in all this work just to have a mid-level body. <laughs> then why are you dancing around like some stripper? I mean, nobody At asked. the gym. That's not what that's for. You see all those things around there? That's called workout equipment. Why don't you work out and stop shaking your butt in front of a camera? Then, tr then trying to pretend like you're being modest. I have a mid-level body. You don't think you do because you wouldn't be bent over showing us everything you ate for breakfast. Can't stand seeing those tripods in the gym. I, I hate it. Especially Every when woman dudes... in there has them. Dudes have them. God. It's really ridiculous. That's yeah. annoying. You're a grown man, dude. They expect you to, like, avoid the camera. Yeah, I always just walk in front of them. Walk like, right I, I just them. walk right in front of it. Two, two shits. Oh, oh, you're making an Instagram video? Oh, let me just walk right in front of you. My bad. Not really. I don't care. You're a grown man. Grow <laughs> Murphy up. Murphy says, don't objectify me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And this will give my enemies plenty of sound bites. So, like, look at what he said on Easter. And they'll cut out little, they'll do biopsies, little clips, so that they can say what I said on Easter. But honestly, Why don't you just play the whole thing? They need all the help they can get. So. They do. They do. They need some. They need some views and some listeners. Happy Easter, you guys. They're up there like PRT smoking crack. <laughs> PRT smoking. Well, if, if maybe you should start because that must be our secret. We smoke crack and we get lots of views. <laughs> they're gonna. They're gonna cut that out right there. Maybe you should smoke crack. <laughs> PRT smoking the DMTs. Dirty Mexican Texas. <laughs> DMTs, damn it, men, try. DMT. Okay, folks, here we go. Anyway, enough chuckle house. We're good here. We got it. We got it. Cocaine is a hell of a drug, Smurfy. Let me tell you. Um, don't do it. It's very bad for you. You sh We smoke all the cracks everywhere. Apparently <laughs> smoking the best. <laughs> uh, so let's get started after we've offended everyone on earth. Because guess what? America, right? It's bottom line. Is PRT on Rumble? Yes, we are. We're going to start possibly next month or the, the month after because we're going to work on getting our syndication done this coming month. we got to figure out that and get it all done. And then we have to go uh, start working on the Rumble doing the because that then I can tell you a whole bunch of stuff that I can't talk about here. So here we go. <clears throat> This first one I'm going to tell you about. This these this came. This is a story that came to us from a guy from guys named Jack and John. Jack and John are twins, and uh, it's funny. I know Jack and John, but they're really nice guys, and and they're not kids anymore. But this happened years ago. So this was when they were 14 years old. Now things happen in people's lives, and I get that you're not always like stuff happens. Okay. Their parents, and they, they, they assured me that their parents were good people. They weren't abusive or anything like that. They weren't going through any kind of trauma. But 
an, an aunt that they had uh, and her husband hatched a plan basically to, you know, get their parents in trouble because of money, money situation. So temporarily they had to go live with their grandmother, who they loved and was very nice to them. They told me and she lived in, in between Kima and uh, what was it? Texas, Texas City. City. And a little town, and I can't remember which one. <laughs> There's like two of them are both the names, Bay something. Um, it's not important, but the, the, the thing is they lived out in the country in between this, and they lived a, a pretty, you know, they lived for there with their grandmother about nine months. And um, they they enjoyed it. They had a good time, because, especially since their grandma didn't, like, like make a big deal about them at school. <laughs> like, they were, like, you know? And uh, their grandma was very nice, and she was very grandma-like and let them – Kind of be out when they shouldn't be, you know, a little too much freedom, whatever. So, you know, they had they had a pretty good time with their at their grandma's house. Now their grandfather had just passed away, so it was timing was good for for her. them to yeah for her, and she was lonely, you know. And uh, so one night they were driving home from the grocery store, and he said, you know, we were there, you know, you know, thirteen, fourteen, whatever at that time. I think they were 13 at that when that happened, and then like they had just turned 14, and then this is when this incident took place, and they saw this creature, something on the side of the road, and we've heard this before, and when it ran across the road, it kind of like was almost monkey-like the way that it ran because its arms were out in front of it, and then it turned its body and it became very canine-like. It looked like a wolf, and they were like, whoa. But the arms, and they said arms, you know, and it, Jack is when I talked. I didn't talk to John, but Jack said that it was arms like were elongated. Very strange, weird thing. And it goes across the road. And he says, dude, I don't know if this was, and th there was another incident they had because they were living in Bandera. And so he said that there's another incident that happened to us involving like a Bigfoot type creature that they saw when they were even younger, when they were both nine years old. And they were with their dad and they were hunting and they saw this Sasquatch type creature come out from behind a tree. And then it just walked off into the woods, like just walked away. It was a chocolate brown color and they saw it, both of them and their dad saw it and their dad raised his rifle and it just walked off into the woods. And it was a very flesh and blood, you know, Bigfoot encounter. And so he said, I don't know if it had anything to do with this, what happened to them later. So what happened to them later, though, I'll get into that. Let me get, let me move over this way, I guess. Uh, I feel like I'm too far away, but. Um, so what happened to them later? This is what happened. The, the thing that they saw run across the road that looked like a dog man, werewolf type creature, like something that we have, have heard before. It ran into an abandoned building. And it was down off this little county road, you know, and they were like, whoa, what the hell? And they had just turned off of the highway. The highway, what is the highway called? What what number? Uh, I think it's one, hang on, I, I just had it pulled up. I think it's 163. 146. What, highway 146 is where, and they had turned off of there, and a couple miles, you know, off of it, that's where this happened. This thing ran across the road, and there was an abandoned building there. And at one time, they think it was a gas station or something, you know, but it had been abandoned and it was just, you know, decrepit. So they're 14 years old. A couple months go by and they talk to some friends, little, little older kids, you know, a couple of kids. Uh, one was 15, one was 16. And one was a female, one was a, a dude. And they said, hey, you know, let's, let's, let's go and explore this. And they told them what they saw. And these kids... They said, okay, we'll do it like this. We're all going to say that you're going to sleep over here or there, whatever, and then we'll all... So they ended up at one of them's house. And, of course, the female, she she wasn't supposed to be out after a, per a certain point, whatever, she snuck out with another female. So there were two females and three guys. And they all decided to go to this abandoned building. This was literally two months after they saw the creature, and they would drive by it, and they would always they would always look in their building. And one time, John thought that he saw something. He was in the back seat, and he's like, "There's something moving in there." 
And his grandmother just she 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 said the grandmother was he said the grandmother she was she was blind as a bat like bless her heart she's she's not with us anymore but she couldn't see good and she really couldn't see at night so what she thought when they she's like he drove really slow too but she saw oh, that that so. weird looking thing that ran across the road and she said that you know it, she thought it was a dog but first she thought it was like a, a giant or the way that she described it, a giant monkey. But then she said, oh, it's a dog. And that was the end of it. But they knew. They were like, no way, dude. That thing looked like a werewolf. And it got down on all fours and it went out. So get this. They go into this abandoned building. They decide, hey, let's go into this abandoned building. So they go in. And he's like, we're, we're walking around. We got flashlights, you know, and we're just, you know, we're, we're, we're checking it out. He's like, and then we get further in toward the back, and you could see this used to be a store of some kind, you know, and you could see where the, there were like the shelves were kind of pushed off to one side, and then we get toward the back, and then there was this other little building toward the back of it, like a little outbuilding or whatever, and he said that, that a couple of the people went out the back door and went toward that building, which was like a storage or something, but he said it was large. Um, so he said when, when they went toward the back of this building, they hear something. And what they heard, he's like, I'll never forget it. It sounded like a, a dog growling very loud coming from that back building. And he said, but it wasn't like any growl you'd ever heard before, ever. He's like, dude, I can't even describe it, dude. He goes, it was like, he goes, I've heard, have you ever heard clips of Godzilla? And I said, yeah, of course we, I have, yeah. He says, it was like Godzilla mixed with like a wolf, mixed with a donkey. There's only uh, way I can describe it. There's a growl and then like a shriek. That's unholy. And he said that everybody came running out of there. And he goes, and then of course, he and my brother, we're, we're, there's only, the one girl was their age, um, and the other girl was 15. She was a year older. And he said, we were all the, young, the younger people, you know, and he goes, and, and our friend, the older dude, he took off running. Well, she was, he was the boyfriend of one of the girls. But he goes, and he just, he knocked us both down. He said, and they were all of them, just, you know, with minus the one female. They all, there were two, I guess, there were two of them. They ran out of the building. They were gone. Like, they were running down the road. I mean, he got, he got, he got up, and they were, and then the one female that was standing there, she took off, too, because she said, oh, my, you know, whatever, oh, my goodness. And they look, and they see something, like, kind of go in between the buildings. A real big black shape. They couldn't make out what it was. And the flashlight, he's like, one of them had the flashlight to work, the other one's flashlight had broken. I remember back those days, I would have been probably, I'm three years older, two and a half years older. I would have been 16, 17. So I remember flashlights weren't too good back then. <laughs> they weren't like they are now. You only had certain ones that were worth the crap, right? So they get up and they, they, they stare into the direction of the darkness of where this thing had ran. Moved. They said it moved so quick. It was like, like lightning. And the thing that they had seen that night on the side of the road that was on the right side of the road ran to the left, they said it was super fast. Like it happened really quick. And the, the, the grandmother just thought it was a, a dog, misidentified. No, at first I thought it was a monkey. It was a dog. It wasn't a monkey. It wasn't a dog. It was whatever this was and what I'm going to tell you. What it was, they still don't know to this day, but I, and I think you, the audience might have some idea. It ran toward them as they were standing there looking around, trying to see which way it went. It went into the darkness and they said out of the darkness, this big, shape that they would just, it was so fast. He goes, I, we couldn't see it. And, and this is Jack. He said, to this day, my brother didn't get a good look at it. I did. He said, it ran through us. Thank you, Kate, for that donation. Just Thank so, you so generous. Much. We appreciate that. Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter to everyone. Thank you, Kate, for that donation. So this thing ran through them. Yeah, you heard me correctly. It ran through them. Oh, it knocked his brother down. 
He said, and I turned like, I looked over my shoulder, my right shoulder, and I was looking up. Wolf, he goes, I saw it. He's like, and what I saw, I'll never forget. He said, the back of this thing was huge. It was a smoky black, gray color, kind of like what I saw. Upright ears, just a straight head going up. Like he said, the back of the head, you, you, if you looked at Batman, if you looked at him from behind, the ears, the way the ears went up like that mm -hmm. on, the, on the bat suit, he goes, that's how it looked. He said, but the back was massive and the build was almost, this is what he said, like a silverback gorilla. But it was, the arms were really long and it was, the, the legs were bent. And he said, and the legs were kangaroo-like almost. And it was running with its legs bent, but it was running fast. He goes, and it had my brother by his shirt and it was just pulling him. And it pulled him all the way to the front door and it just let him go. He goes, and this thing went through the doors. Through the doors. Now, I, I, I had to stop at that point. I said, Jack's, uh, Jack, I'm going to say his name. I said, Jack, I said, I got, I got to ask. I got to ask you. I said, did, did, did it bust through? The, he goes, no, dude, no. No, man. He goes, it's like it dematerialized and went through the doors. And then it was just, that was it. It was gone. But get this, the people that were with him, the friends that were with him, they were running down the road scared in two different directions. And it took off chasing after the young girl. She gets back. She goes all the way back to her neighborhood. She said the whole time she heard something behind her. She got quite the head start. And her neighborhood wasn't very, it was right across the highway, luckily for her. And she goes, I run up to the neighbor's house and was banging on the door because that was the closest house. And I look back and I see this blur moving really fast. But it wasn't going, this is what she saw, what she told these twins. It wasn't going straight like this. It was kind of moving in a zigzag, like zigzagging. Like it was bouncing around like a pinball. My words, just the way that they described it. So I asked him, I said, what do you think it was? He goes, it was a damn werewolf. <laughs> he goes, that's all I could tell you, man. It was, like a, it was like a werewolf. And he asked me, he's like, do, 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 you, do you get stories like that quite a bit? I said, yes, I do. And thank goodness, because their, their mother was actually a listener of the show. Thank you, Jennifer, for being a, a listener of the show. I appreciate that, and we, we appreciate your support. And I'm glad that things worked out. And the people who were behind getting the, it didn't work. So let's just say that. So anyways, what this thing was, was some sort of ethereal being that could manifest as physical because they saw, th this, is, this had to be the same thing they saw run across the road and go toward that building. And this isn't the end of it. Just, just stick around. So what ended up happening? She gets away. She gets into her house. This thing comes up to her window. She, she goes in and she wakes up her mom. Obviously, she snuck out. Minus her little friend that was still there hiding on the other side of the building, screaming and crying. or whatever. Not screaming, but she was crying. They heard her sobbing. And they go and get her. And then their friend, who they thought was a big tough guy, that, that was like, you know, Pushing people all the way. He's, he's like knocking people over to get away. And he goes, this guy, we thought he was like a big tough dude, man. And he just, he, he ended up going home and crying. I mean, he's pretty tough against his own people. Well, they called him and he was like crying. He's like, dude, I didn't expect that, bro. Paper tiger. And he said, this guy was like a linebacker on the football team. I'm like, really? Wow. Because he was quite the, quite the, the wussy, you know? But you can't really blame him. I'm I mean, I'm not like... I didn't cry, though, when I saw what I... I didn't cry about it. I mean, it was scary. It's understandable, but I also don't pretend like I'm going to not be scared if I see a werewolf. I don't think he was expecting it. I don't think they thought it was real. Yeah. I didn't ask that, but... That's the problem, though. It's like when someone tells you, like, hey, I saw a werewolf. You want to go check it out? I'm not supposed to be like, oh, they're lying. Let's go check out... Like, you're just supposed to be like, uh... I don't know if that's exactly what I want to do on a Tuesday night is go and be chased by werewolves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
I don't know. I, I just, I don't like cowards. <laughs> you know, I posted a video, um, you know, somebody who's a controversial guy, you know, Tate. A lot of people don't like him. I'm not a big fan. He's real mouthy, but he's right about some stuff, and he's right. He talks Even about the broken cowards. clock is wrong twice yeah. a day. I mean, it's right twice a day, not wrong. Twice a day. It's wrong. It's most wrong of the most of the time. time. But, See, but you know, even he, a right clock is wrong sometimes. <laughs> you know, he uh, he said something about cowards, and it was I posted it on my Facebook. Go look at it. He's right though. What he says, mm -hmm. and, and the, he says that these guys were going to fight him, and they weren't. They it didn't. They weren't. They weren't gonna fight him he goes they, they saw that i was serious i was not gonna back down he goes and then my friend starts trying to get me to apologize and, and being a coward then they got emboldened so he turned and popped his friend you know like forget you man i mean you're not gonna help one way or the other what's the point you become a liability I mean, yeah that's it i mean some guys so will this guy off. does the cowardly thing and knocks him down and then runs well the thing too is like his girlfriend's there like you know that's the thing that i just Kind of makes it yeah, and his girlfriend and him ran together out, mm -hmm. but she ran the opposite direction of him. He ran one way and she ran the other. But then again, they lived in the opposite direction, so that makes sense. They were running back to their houses. Here's the thing. So it follows one of them. She had to wake up her mom and her older sister and her stepdad and tell them, hey, Sorry, I snuck out of the house, and there's a giant werewolf outside. I lured it here. That did not go well with her stepdad or her mother, who woke up yelling and screaming until this thing pounded on the wall. Now, when that happened, according to what Jack was telling me, what she told them, everything changed. They were no longer... Like arguing, yelling, and screaming, everybody was like, what the hell was that? And then they hear this shriek, growl, whatever, that came through the wall and affected them. Now we know, we've heard of this, it's called infrasound. And then her stepdad did something very brave. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, sorry. Very brave. He went outside with a rifle. Personally, I would have used a shotgun, but he said it was a rifle. That's what she told him. Grabs a rifle. I don't know what kind of gun it was. And goes and looks. He fires off a couple rounds. It's a very rural area. And then the county sheriffs show up because they called them. Neighbors were outside at this point wondering what the hell was going on. He was shook up. But when the police came, he didn't tell them he saw a werewolf. He said it must have been a prowler. Somebody was trying to break into the house. Here is my thing to this. This thing can manifest as a physical being. It can go through a, well, they were glass doors, but still, it went through glass physical doors, doors. Physical doors. Didn't bust them out like on the movies. But it also grabbed John and drug him across the floor. So that's like full capabilities of both physical and spiritual. And the only forms. reason that, yeah, exactly. The only reason that John didn't, because his head hit the door and it let go. And then it went through the door. And it took off chasing after this one particular girl. Now I'm going to say this. Why did it choose her? Why did it go after her? So for the next, like, two weeks, this thing continued to harass at night this family. They were coming home from getting some food, and this thing jumps out of a tree and runs across the road. And they all scream and freak out. Four people in the car all see it. Their dad, st or stepdad, said, don't talk about it, told them not to talk about it. And so Jack and John didn't get the full effect of this until years later. They were in their 20s. And they would go back because they would go to Kima to visit their grandmother regularly or what was outside of there. But And so they got to know one of those girls very well, and they stayed friends with her. Um, the other two, eventually, they moved away. 
And he said that we stayed friends with her. And then eventually he goes, she moved to Houston and got a, got a job working at a, a place in Houston. And they would go there regularly and they would talk to her. And he said that, you know, years later, I think she, I think he said, I'm not hundred percent. I think they said she was working like at a Dave and Buster's or something. And so they went in there and they talked to her or whatever. And he's like, I thought about telling my story, but this is at a time when he started thinking about this. And I was talking about this the other day when the whole physical dog man thing was holding sway. Nobody was wanting to hear about this thing possibly being an ethereal being because they were trying to create a narrative, a spin a narrative that, that this thing was nothing but a, 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 a giant wolf dog like thing that was evolutionarily became that way, which sounds completely ludicrous when you think about it, which is just stupid. Um, that's my opinion. Take it or leave it. I don't care. But that, but this is what, you know, he was saying, he goes, dude, we were talking about it. And he goes, and everything we looked at, everybody was talking about this dog man. And it was just this physical creature. And he goes, this is not what the hell I saw. So it's weird. He's like, you know, I, I, you know, we just kind of gave up on it. We didn't want to talk about it because they approached someone and said, Hey, we, you know, and told them the story and I know who it is, two of them. And those doofuses at that time, I remember. They were not interested in this. In fact, one of them, got a very big show, totally just kind of laughed and said, oh, okay, and then never got back with them. And the other one wanted them to change the story, to leave out the part about it going through the doors. Ain't that cute? Pretty typical. Lying frauds. Delana says, I just tuned in, so I have no idea what's being discussed. Well, the first hour, and you can just go ahead and earmark that if you don't want to hear a rant about millennials and Easter and the Bible, um, go ahead and just timestamp it. But you don't, if you do it in the, in the comments, Anthony and Tony will probably take the comment off. I personally don't give a damn. But um, we, for the last uh, 26 or 27, however long it's been minutes, we've been talking about a dogman encounter, if that's what you want to call it. I don't know what this Very. is. It's a ethereal werewolf spirit being creature, ma'am, sir, baby child. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Bubblicious fish dog. Very spiritually aware uh, werewolf. Aware. It's an aware wolf. <laughs> <laughs> so this werewolf whatever it was. And, and it wasn't, it wasn't, they never stood up straight. So they don't know how tall it would have been, but he said it was about six and a half feet with its legs bent down. Very, what looked like large legs, but it didn't extend them. That's a very intriguing encounter. And Anthony and me were looking up the map and talking about it earlier before the show. We were going over this, like, what is this? What the hell is going on here? And stick around because I got another one about a ghost ship on the Caspian Sea. Friend of mine can tell you, really, really weird. So this thing, whatever it is that we're dealing with, would come back night after night after night to mess with this, this girl. So one day, when she was getting off work at Dave and Buster's and he's like, I'm not going to lie to you. He goes, we were there and we, we, you know, we, we drank, we've been drinking. And he says, and so at the end of the night, the workers, they were closing up and she says, y'all are good. Stay here. You know, we're, we're going to chill. So the workers are all gathered around and they're, they're having a drink and they're talking. He's like, and our friend was pouring some shots and everybody was having fun. And then she started talking about this werewolf creature. And what was really interesting was while they were talking about it, the manager, one of the managers, sister managers, she said, me and my husband, get this, had both, we've both in our lives 
been attacked by something when we were kids that looked like a werewolf. It, it, it attacked me and my little brother, and it attacked him and his little brother. She's like, we dated for two years. We never talked about it. And then one day, she said, we were watching this show called Cursed. Or was it, what is it, with Christina Ricci? Yeah, I think it's oh, called yeah. Cursed. And he said that, you know, she said that they were watching it. And then she was like, we started talking. And he's like, you know, I saw one one time. And she's like, what? Me too. And he goes, no way. And they had never talked about this. Because you really didn't. Have Thank a... you for that donation, Alexander. Do what? Because you didn't really have a place to talk about it to people. I mean, that's why these shows are so important because i mean we kind of harp about it a bunch but you know you keep seeing the effects over and over and over again and a lot of aspects of both witnesses and even other podcasts where it's just someone who is afraid to speak you know and Mm -hmm. that's the shame of it and you know and this story and the, the previous story it's a lot of people being like oh this isn't the time to talk about it because Every time I try to talk about it, it either doesn't fit the agenda or I'm just looked at, at like a crazy person. So, I mean, who knows really what's going on? There could be like the craziest story you've ever heard right next to you, but because that person just had bad experiences about talking about what's going on in their life, you'll never hear it. So. Yeah, it's like they get screwed coming and going because it, it, what what happens to these people is bad enough. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's traumatizing for them. They never, it's like, there's no going back from that. There's no, uh, you can never live life the same. And, and in a way, it's like a part of you kind of dies because you can never go back to really being that person that you were before whatever happened to you happened to you, especially if it's something like this. Mm-hmm. But then afterwards, you got to deal with, with, with other people who arguably may make your life just as bad, if not worse than, than what the experience did. You know, and, and that's sad. Especially if you're dealing with like, you know, repeat like encounters and, you know, someone who's haunted or, or being plagued by multiple visits by something. And then every time they try to reach out, then they're like, Oh, you're just insane. Or, you know, you're seeing things or, you know, it's it's just looked down upon them or like they look down upon you for even having these experiences like it's your fault somehow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, th- then to have podcasters turn around and be like, hey, you let me change what you're going through so that it fits what I want it to fit. Mm-hmm. It's kind of just disgusting on both ends. And it makes me, made me, made me look down upon like the community a lot because of that because you know I, certain aspects of well, it. You remember how not it was. like all the community but like there are the toxic parts of the community like the real bad parts that mm-hmm. you know and maybe like really be like come on guys like we could be a lot better and we could be further if you just would stop and because i would like you know we would all listen to expanded perspective and mm-hmm. a lot of other shows when we weren't doing this it was kind of like sad to see the behind the scenes of like these other shows how how they really operated. Yeah. So Dana says, especially when your story doesn't fit the normal mind being a Panther man, I really have no place for me to talk other than PRT. I sound crazy. Yeah, well, you're not crazy because we get those reports, not as much as Dogman, but we do. I think Rita we had... Burnett, a, thank you for that donation. Oh, thank you so much. I think we had an early episode about, uh, like, uh, these upright walking, like, feline people looking things I, I i don't i don't know what to call them wear cat but but it, it was like it was like a panther I, I don't know what it was but it's, it's somewhere in the early archives but there were several we did though no, yeah. we do a bunch. especially it's, even it's our that, that one in particular it was like one of the earliest like really at, uh out of the norm mm-hmm. things that we did that was the that. ones near noack yeah yeah and and folks if you don't know where noack is byersville noack and we did an investigation out there, and, and that's one of those where the, the boy was seeing, like, a, a werewolf-like thing. And that was that one freaked me out because the, the blender, like, the thing flew up in the air. And I'm like, what? The, this isn't a dog, man. What is, what is this? You got poltergeist. And then, 
That was, the, but you know, you guys remember the, the, that investigation went a long ways toward us changing how we view things. I mean, like, I think we were already kind of going that way, but then we started going like, you know, people are seeing Bigfoot werewolves, but they're also having ghost activity. You know, I don't think that investigation involved any UFOs or anything like that. But and then some of these other stories started coming in with UFOs. Now, the one girl you interviewed from Arizona. Mm -hmm. And when I talked to her, she started talking about uh, UFOs. And I'm like, well, Sedona, right? Mm -hmm. was Sedona. And I said, dude, what in the hell? Well, she moved. but yeah. yeah, she moved, but still. And then the one from Mexico, the mm -hmm. one where she said she went to Mexico and then she moved all the way to uh, I don't, or not, no, U uh, Utah? Yeah, it was somewhere up Idaho. north. Like, she tried to get as far as way. Yeah, and it still showed up. I mean, yeah. it just doesn't, you know. They followed her. I mean, yeah, it's, it's th this phenomena is is bizarre, to say the least. It's a strange, weird thing. I mean, you can't, I don't know how to say. I mean, these two can tell you, but there is some weird stuff that we've dealt with. I mean, weird stuff. And if we would have had cameras back then to do, to go to these places, and, you know, and we could have done so much, you know. But it's, you know, we will, though, eventually. We're going to get they're gonna get it going here, believe me. Melissa Eileen Purvis says, okay, there, there's over 500 in chat. Let's do the dollar donation run up. I'm ready to see the, some dollars fly. <laughs> everybody, happy Easter. Thank you. I appreciate that. I wish that everybody just want, would donate one dollar. Just one dollar. <laughs> you could make my Easter much better than it is. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. I just, you know what? Give us likes. Give us likes and views. That's what really matters the most. A lot of people are hurting financially, and I get it. You can't. You can't do it. Um, and if push comes to shove, I may just have to sell some of my jewelry. Unfortunately, once you melt it down and put it into something like this, it's not worth as much. So you got to melt it and take it out. And then when you do that, just just giving you an advice, the, the, you lose some of the gold when you pull it out. Because yeah, I've done top. it. Yeah, I, believe me, I know. I don't, I, don't, I don't deal with fake whatever because it messes up my skin. I don't wear fake metals. And I don't wear silver. I just don't. Um, and not because I'm a werewolf, okay? All right? And it's weird because my body is salt-sensitive. doesn't like salt. <laughs> so <laughs> you would think I'm some kind of, you know, weird creature or whatever, but I'm not, These are for health and aesthetic reasons only. If I was, though, man, I would use my abilities for good. I'm not joking, man. I would go after some bad people. Mm-hmm. I would. But the, unfortunately, though, the bad people are the ones that have those abilities. Uh, they yeah. go around doing bad. Yeah. Just they're bad. You know, Susie Jago. Thank you, Susie. Such a sweetheart. When we talked at the conference, it was a pleasure to meet you. You're such a nice person. I still have my award you gave us. Right we there. hung it up. Right yeah, there. hung yeah. it up right there on the on the wall. Yep. Uh, you, Nikki McSporin said, "Wolf, we've heard your brother and friends talk about their experiences at the house you lived in for ten years. But did Anthony or Tony ever experience anything there? That was before our time. That was before their time. Yeah. Although Anthony did go in there a couple times when we went in there." At the, yeah, y'all were moving out. We were moving out. We had just moved out, and Anthony went with us a couple times. And, and then at that time, creepy. he was his creepiest yeah. thing there, so they kind of all stayed yeah. away. Mm -hmm. Somebody scratched up the walls, and they said that my dogs did it. I said, no. I mean, like, literally, there were scratches all over the walls. I'm like, my dog isn't nine foot tall. We had these 10-foot ceilings. And what, what are you talking about? I mean, it was weird. You know, it was weird. Anthony saw it. You saw it. Yeah. Especially in the one bedroom, there were scratches. That's the bedroom where people would always hear it. And I just talked it up to more weirdness with that place. I don't know what the hell was that was. I, you know, it wasn't us. Amy Creel says, 350. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that, Seanman. Cool hand. Madeline, great show tonight. All, all, like always, happy Easter. Happy Easter, Maddie. Samantha. Uh, thank you. You and Tyler have a great Easter. Hope you had a good Easter. Everybody, hope you had a great Easter. Mine was uneventful, and I enjoyed just resting, but I had to read over a ton of information because somebody sent me a contract being nice for Easter. They said, here, sign this contract. I'm going to scam you. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let you rip me off. I would, though. I would if I was stupid, but I'm not. So, But, you know, I've wasted my time, and then I get to the fine print, and I'm like, oh, okay, there it is. Well... Sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm giving up being stupid for Lent, so I can't. <laughs> I gave up being stupid for life, period. <laughs> Two shadows. But, uh, you know, people, they, they try. You know, shout out to the to the loser that tried to scam me. I'm going to call them tomorrow and let them, I, I declined their offer. It's cute, though. That was cute. That was a nice thing to do, especially when I'm, I, they didn't give it to me on Easter. They gave it to me on Good Friday, which is just as bad. 
But they're super Christian, though. That's the good thing. They're super Christian. Super Christian. You could trust them. You could trust them. Gave me a big old spiel about how I could trust him. And he tries to rip me off. Because America, and I'm dumb. I just got one of those faces, the little potato, squishy potato head face. I just look stupid. I'm like, I guess so. I exude the stupid look or something. It's always somebody over there like, hey, buddy, what, what do you say? Hey, come up on here. Let's talk. Sign this contract here. You won't be not liking our time in no time. Whatever. I'm not going to do it. I sat there one time for two and a half hours at a uh, presentation out in New Braunfels. Like timeshare? Timeshare. I did it to him three times, and every time I got a TV. <laughs> and I'm not joking. And then the guy goes, what, look, if you just do this, sign this tier, right, you know, just come on, come on. And then he goes and gets another one, then another one, another demon comes. And I just kept looking at it and going like, and what, the, the, the second time, they, they should have known better already. They, the guy remembered me, and I said, look, I told you the last time I can't read. <laughs> And the guy was like, you, you can't read? Seriously? I said, of course I could read. I wouldn't have been able to read the flyer to do come here and get a TV. So they just kept trying. They just kept trying and kept trying and kept trying. And they're like, look, man, we're going to give you a few free days to think about it. They finally gave it. That's what they'll do eventually. They'll give you some little bit of time. So I go over there and I enjoy my time and I swim and have a, have a good time. And then I go back in and I gave him the key and said, hey, thanks. I'm not going to do it. Wait, wait, hold on now. <laughs> Hold on. Before you do that, let's bring Billy Mays on. Hey, everybody. He comes out and starts talking, you know, and Billy Mays here with an amazing TV offer. Oh, step right up. Open up the coffers. Come on, guy. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm, sorry, I'm not going to do it. And they just kept on and on and on and on. Got them to buy me food. Or they give you food. Like, they'll give you food yeah. and stuff. I said, okay, I'll go through the presentation again. Let me see it again. And I just sat there for an hour. Sleeping, my brother sleeping. It helps when you're stoned. And then I just said, you know what? I'm really, I'm, I'm okay with this. I'm not going to do it. But it's I will en enjoy some more of those panini sandwiches you got. I like those. Those are good. Thank you for that. And thank you for that donation. He says, hey, Josh, a little off topic. Just wanted to say I can tell when someone is a pseudo intellectual and I can tell you're actually intelligent. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so quite the philosophers. I'm a pseudo pseudo intellectual. Mm, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, trust Jesus. Nice name. Great show. Thanks. Uh, this is author Thank and you. illustrator. Oh yeah, BJ. Le, yeah, Lapierre. I wish I could give more. You guys are great. That's fine. You gave what you could. Delana. Thank you for that donation. Look, here's the thing. I got them every time, and I had three TVs to prove it. <laughs> The last time they gave me a microwave, which I was aggravated. I was like, what? You guys are doing bad. I was like, I'm going to sign these papers. You're going to give me that? I had the pen in my hand like I was going to do it. And so I like put a dot and they were like, ah. and then I lifted up. I said, you know, I really want tacos. If you guys can give me some tacos, that would make this signing so much better. So I ate. And then I was like, I really don't want a microwave. I like a TV. I'm like, you're supposed to give me a TV. And then they were like, okay. And then they went back. They're like, oh, we're out of TVs. And I threw the pen down. I was like, well, then well, you're out of luck. Mm -hmm. hey, well, well, you know what? You know what? Let me see what I can do. Let me see what I can do. So at one time, and they gave me a $200 gift card to Walmart. So th th they came back out and they gave me the gift card. And then I was looking at it and I was like, really, dude? I came here for the TV. And they were like, well, you know, I mean, you know, you just, you know. I said, you know what? I'm not going to sign this. And then they finally, they came out and they brought the TV. And the guy had went to the back and the other two guys came out. And I said, well, go ahead and put it in my truck. This doofus came back, did not know that the TV was already loaded up. And I was like, well, see ya. And he was like, wait, 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 wait. Come on. Let's go. What are you going to you sign? I said, I was. I was. But no TV, right? No deal. And then he calls me. And he goes, they sent you a TV. They gave you a TV in your truck. I said, huh, how about that? And I just hung up. <laughs> then they never let me come back. But three times. And you and they always talked about, like, I, like I was. that was the first time I'd been there. And to be honest, I think you would have. they would have got you that fourth time. But I they did it gave three up. times in two years. They give up on themselves. Springleaf, oh. it was called. Oh, yeah, I remember them. Springleaf. I got did it three times. I always thought it would be funny to go to one of those, but but just take like an Ambien beforehand <laughs> and just be all like zonked out. <laughs> well, that's what and being just so be doing it for. over and over and over. Or like if you get like, like if you if you're like in, in a police <laughs> interrogation, you know, but like, but you actually didn't do anything and you just don't want to deal with it. You just take an ambient and pass out on their table. Yeah. Well, Willie, Willie did something very similar. <laughs> I think because he got arrested stoned. Yeah. 
And he was just like, I, they were talking to me. He goes, and I just fell asleep. <laughs> like, kept slapping his leg. They're like, look at that chart over there. Who does number two work for it? He's like, I don't even know what that is. Why is it melting? <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is the most ridiculous. Mm -hmm. If you tell that piece of paper during a skit I've ever done. If you tell that paper to sit still, maybe I could read it. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to do this. Just wobbling if your camera around. keeps melting, okay? <laughs> I mean, I wanted to do this documentary <laughs> with you, man, but you got bugs coming out of your head. I can't be doing all this. Can you tell man. Officer Fuzzy Pants to calm down. <laughs> so here, let's get back to the. Yeah. We're joking around. Look, thank you, Linda, and your dreams. Let's get back onto the topic here instead of the joking. All right, sorry. Folks, part of the show, though, is, is it's, that's what's fun, right? And I'll, I'll tell you what it is, and then I'll get back to this, story, I promise. I used to like Jeff Corwin Adventures. Yeah, he was cool. The, the, the old one, the old show back in the 90s or whatever it was. And he was so cool, and he would make you laugh, but then he was teaching you stuff at the same time, and he was just making you laugh all the time. So I read his thing about him, and they said there was none of that was rehearsed. It was all just... He would ad lib, you know, and then they would just be like, oh, that's good. That works. And they just leave it in there. And so and, but he was always cracking jokes and just making everybody laugh, the camera crew included. So I thought, you know, Jeff Corwin, he's a good dude, man. I'd like to, you know, do, do not, not model my show after it. But if you're going to make, you know, people scared, bring them back a little bit with some some humor. My cousin Jamie, she's like, and bless her heart, she's like, I like your show. But it scares the crap out of me. Everything's better when you can laugh. Yeah. I told her that's the point. Consider it putting you on notice. There are things in this world. We don't even scare anybody else, just you. <laughs> <laughs> they're terrifying. But they are. They are. Now, back to this. So they're at the David Buster's, and they're talking at the, at, the, at the counter. And she tells the story about what happened to her and, and John or Jack and John, they had not heard this before. And Jack was like, I had not heard this part of it. And she said that one night there was a scratching on the wall by her bed. It kept coming to her bedroom. At the same time, all this was going on. Nothing was happening to these twins. What's crazy though, is when they followed the timeline, two months of this ter terrifying, whatever, then it went to their house. And for them, it got real weird. It wasn't just scratching and, and pretending like it was going to guess. It pretended because it never went in and did anything to this girl. It never went into her house. But she was skidding. And she was, it was scratching, right? And she's like, and so finally she goes, I couldn't take it anymore. She's like, I couldn't take it anymore. And she's like, my grandmother was Catholic. So I went to the church and I got holy water. And she's like, I don't even know how this works. Thank you for that donation. Josh, a question, have you heard people that have allegedly gone through possessions experiencing? Yes, we've done a sh a stories about that. Um, but back to what I was saying, Sophie, uh, go check out the Brazilian exorcist. Um, so what happens is that this thing that was outside the window, she says, I opened the window. She's like, and get this, this kind of freaked me out. It just kind of like jumped in front of the window and was like, ah, you know, and it came at her, like just like that. Huh. And But it didn't try to go through the wall. She said that like the minute it did, she flung holy water like all over it. Just She's like, I just threw it through the screen. And she said that she thought, you know, there was going to be something that was going to make it mad yeah. or it was going to, you know, like Start melt. Burning. Like, ah. you know, she's like, nothing happened. <laughs> She said nothing happened. It just it just jumped back and it stood and looked at her for a couple seconds, and then went back toward the window. And then at that point, one of its hands started to go through the the window. She's like, it was like going through the screen. The hand was going through the screen, and she said there was this weird orangey color coming off of the the, the where it was meet that you know wherever the part of the hand the way Jack Jack was describing it what she said it was like turning orange. Like it, like like that. There was like an orange ring around wherever it was going through, like dematerializing. So then I asked Jack. I said, "When you look back, listen." I said, "Did when you look back and you saw John being drugged, did you did you see that that when it went through the doors?" And he said, "You know," he goes, "I remembered something like that, like a light." 
He's like, but I didn't really think about it until she said that. And then I stopped him right there. Y'all know that. I said, okay, okay, maybe that's a false memory because we know this from dealing with witnesses quite a bit that they, what will happen is they'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. But it's kind of like a memory that you make, you know? Your brain kind of like. Yeah, and I want to be yeah. real careful because I want the story to be as pure as possible. But, you know, when somebody's recounting a story from 20, 30 years before, th th you don't know. Because how much has influenced them from that time when they saw it, you know, until they retell it. And maybe they haven't, you know, so then they Things go like through research and stuff like that. Yeah, because you, you go through all this weird stuff. Like one guy gave me a story and this one was a vampire type story. And guess what? I'm going to tell this story tonight. I'm going to tell you. It's another one, another vampire story. But it's not the way you think it is and hope you don't get mad because it might not be to your liking or whatever. Some people want to hear these Bram Stoker tribe Dr Dracula stories, and that's not what this is. But I'll get to that one in a minute, all right? Let's finish up this one. So this dog man, creature, whatever, jumps back, starts going through the wall, and then she realized, like, it got to one point, and it, like, stopped. And she noticed where she threw the holy water, it was, like, kind of dripping down the screen, because when you throw something through a screen, guess what? It doesn't come out, you know, whatever. Right? Because I filled up a, a a water gun with urine. <laughs> oh, yeah, and the kids tried to spray it. my cousin around. <laughs> I tried to spray my cousin with it. And guess what? The screen and the fan, not a good idea. Oh, I got on him. But, but it, it also got it, on you. Yeah, it did. It did. Yes, it did. The um, bounce back. So, it's, 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 you know, I don't recommend it. Let's put it that way. Okay? Maybe with some of these high power, like the ones Christian and uh, your, your little brothers have those, you know, our other cousins and nephews, whatever, your mm -hmm. cousins, whatever. They, they have those powerful ones, you know, with the super soakers. Or yeah. But the ones we had as a kid, it was this little plastic, you know, I think it was like a pink one or something, you know, like, hey, I'm going to get you. Mm -hmm. And so I went and I, you know, pee peed in it. And what was, what would, didn't fill up, I put, I was like seven, you know, I put toilet water in <laughs> Oh. I filled it up, and I was ready to go. Gave them um, a Jewish special. Well, because they did something sh crappy to me. So I was like, I'm going to get them back. So that was my my plan on getting them back, whatever. And what they did was my uh, my his mother stuck a ketchup bottle in my and squirted it down into my ear. Yeah, she thought it was funny. They all they were laughing and dude, it was it was it was like down into my ear and I couldn't hear. It was and I thought I was gonna die, you know. And so anyway, that was my way of getting them back. And I was trying to spray her, but Ralph ran in front and I just squirted it and got him. But uh anyway, no harm done, right? <laughs> he tried to kick my butt, you know, and he was a couple years older than me at the time. I don't know if he could, but I, I you know, barricaded myself into the closet. Um but <laughs> early biological warfare, yes, so um but anyways, so what ended up happening, she's like, the, the holy water was starting to drip down onto its arm, and then it pulled it back. Then she thought, okay, this worked. This actually worked. Not the way we thought it did. No, yeah. But she, but then she said, you know, there was another thing. She had a rosary there. And like she said, she wasn't Catholic, but she grabbed the rosary and tried to, like, you know, start saying prayers and stuff. And she said the thing didn't seem like it was phased by it. It was just not happy with the water. Now, I told her there could be another thing going on there, too. It could have just been the water, period, because ethereal beings typically don't like to mess around with water unless they're water-based beings. And when you're dealing with things like the Fueth and things like that, the Undine, they come out of the water. They're way more powerful than these land-based creatures. I'm not joking. I'm being serious. But they can't go very far away from the, the, the water. And also, I was going to think, like, it was dripping down, so wouldn't that technically be running water? What? Like, the water on the screen was dripping down, right? So wouldn't that be running water? Yeah. So, like, that that running water definitely does. Could have been a barrier them. or something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I don't know. Um, but, I mean, we but we've also heard of, like, you know, creatures, like, <clears throat> in a water park. Yeah. You know, we, we talked to the, the mm -hmm. people at the, what was that place we went to at the, during the uh, conference? The splash, splash, uh, and splash town, splash, splash town, yeah. and those guys told us that story. So, well, they told us, you know, about one of them anyway. So he, here's the thing, and she asked me this, and I said I have no answer for you. I, 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 he he asked me this. He says I I have. What do you think about that? And I told him I have no answer for you, Jack. I said, what did she say though? Did she? What is her opinion of it? And he says, you know, she she couldn't say. But then there were these other two people there at the D and B, Dave and Buster's, who said, hey. 
you know, I got, there was something weird that happened to us. And what Jack told me was that the, the woman said, when I was a kid, she goes, I was like eight, nine years old. She's like, I was little. And she's like, our house was, was haunted. She's like, and I was terrified of uh, ghosts. You know, I was just always thinking there was a ghost there. She's like, and I realized I could see them. She's like, there was a man that would walk around her house and get this. This is really creepy. Who was, would carry his head. Mm-hmm. He was like a headless dude and he would <laughs> carry his head. Yeah. Um, this was like in Houston and South side of Houston. And she's like, and then she goes, years later, I did some research and I found out that a guy was killed there by drug dealers. And guess what? Lost his head. So yeah, <laughs> weird, right? Yeah. Um, they killed him that way because you know, drug dealers can be bad people. <clears throat> so what ended up happening? She said, one day, she's like, I was there playing. She's like, I was like messing around with Legos. And she goes, and I had, she goes, I'll never forget. This is what she told Jack and John. She's like, I was trying to pull the Legos apart. She's like, and I see this hand come down and grab it and pull it up. And I look up. She's like, and I'm staring at it. And there's this big, tall, gray, light gray colored werewolf. And she's like, it was just like opened its mouth and was like, and was like growling. And its teeth were really big and it just leaned into her. And she was just like scared to death. She's like, and I felt my bed, I hit the back of my bed because I was sitting in front of my bed. We had these bunk beds, her and her sister. And she's like, and I just sat there. And she's like, it was like that scene from Aliens where Sigourney Weaver's got the alien in her face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she's like, she's just like, I just turned my head because I've seen my dogs do that as a sign of submission. And she's like, and then it just kind of sniffed back and forth. And then it just turned and walked out the door. And she's like, and I look to see where it went. And she goes, and then it turned and went into my mom and dad's bedroom. She's like, and then right then my sister's coming down the hall. And then she goes, I was terrified, but I wanted to scream. And she's like, so I got up and I told her, I said, there's something in mom and dad's room. So they go and they look and there's nothing there. And then she never saw it again. Never, ever saw it again. It came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere and disappeared into nowhere into thin, and it was it. That was it. Never saw it ever again. Then her husband, so she retold her husband's story, right? And she told Jack and John that that her husband had had a similar incident. Very, very weird. Like he was sitting there and he was reading a book and he had the book up like this on his desk. And he sees something go down behind the book and he was like, what the hell? And he had a dog. Um, but then he said that, you know, he heard something like a growling noise and even kind of like a whine. And so he thought this thing was really big, whatever it was. He's like, and if I didn't know any better, you know, I thought I would think that the head looked like a wolf. So he lowers the book and it's like down on its, you know, like, like this, like, and it's looking right at him and its mouth was closed. And he says that he was like, thought it was just like a stray animal that had somehow gotten into the house. He goes, and then it stood up straight up. And became, you know, he goes, as a kid, I don't know how big it was. He's like, it was big, um, really tall. And he said that he was just staring at it and it just looked at him. And then it opened its mouth and kind of like did this weird thing where it showed its teeth and then kind of opened its mouth wide, almost like it was yawning. And then turned out and walked out of the bedroom. And he, same thing, never saw it again, but his brother did. Now he said his brother one time was outside he was riding his bike and he said this thing came running out at him at an angle and he was like, whoa, and he almost lost control of his bike and then the thing stood up and then it just took off the other direction when it saw like a car coming. And so his brother, that was right in front of their house. So him and his brother both had like these one-off experiences with this werewolf creature. But what's crazy though is that it was gray. Both of them had the same experience. And here he is with this girl and there's got to be something to this. I mean, I'm telling you, there has to be a connection here because they both got together and then two years into their relationship, they're not not married yet, they're boyfriend and girlfriend. And they're just like sitting there watching a, a, a movie, that Christina Ricci movie. And they're like, you know, when I was a kid, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you know, and then they're like, what, really? And then she, she goes, yeah, my husband thought I was lying. Like I was just agreeing with him. She's like, no, I did. And then he goes, okay, well, what happened to you? And she goes, whenever I was telling my encounter to him, what happened to me? Like, he's like, that's crazy. Like he was like, you know, so anyway, that's what Jack had said. He said that this is what had happened. And he said, dude, me and my brother were both there. And so, 
you know, he's like, I don't know. He goes, I don't know what to believe. He goes, it's crazy how many people have actually seen these things. And I said, it is. It really is. And a lot of people see them and don't know what they're looking at. They have no clue what they're dealing with. They don't. And they don't even realize that they were, like me and Anthony met a guy at the gym where it was a guy and a girl. And they started talking about this encounter with this being. And I look at Anthony, I'm like, that's a dog man. <laughs> that's a dog man. You know, he thought I was just into ghosts or whatever, you know, because I said paranormal round table. He goes, oh, like ghosts and stuff. And he's like, you know, I saw something one time and, and he started describing a dog man or werewolf, whatever. And I said, and, but he goes, yeah, but, and, you know, it was just, it, I knew, I knew my mind was playing tricks on me. I said, no, I was like, you saw one and you tried to rationalize it by, by your brains trying to tell you this doesn't exist. This can't be happening. To keep you safe. Yeah. Abductees can go through that too, especially the first time it happens. They're just like, okay, this isn't really happening. Uh, this is a dream or something, you know, they, and they just try to like, they're just like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, that's why repressed memories, you know, exist. Mm -hmm. So you have this, this weird like phenomena that goes on. Um, I don't know, man. It's, it's like a, I don't know what, what to call it. Like, um, like, like, I don't know, like. Your brain does this, I don't know, what, what am I looking for here? Like your brain tries to tell you this isn't happening. So then maybe it changes it, it alters it somehow into, well, you know what? This is a dream. Like, you you know, you. I, mean, I, don't think that's, I don't think that's happened to me so much, Like, but I know people that have told me that, that it's like their, their mind. And when they're telling you this, you can sit there and you can almost say, hey, that's exactly what's happening. They're, it's, your mind is just effing with you, man. I'm telling you. Excuse me for using the terminology, but that's what it's doing. Yeah, it's like your brain is protecting you, and, like, it, you either will literally blank out entirely or you'll remember entirely different to where you'll be like, two people can experience the exact same thing, but one person will be like, no, I saw a bear, while the other guy's like, I saw a werewolf. I don't know how you saw a bear. We were both looking at the same thing. It's because one guy is trying to protect himself, like his brain is protecting himself and will omit certain things or... or like it, it'll be like the adrenaline or something will, will coursing through him so he won't remember things correctly but like it's just a way of like your brain trying to shield you and it leads to these you know weird scenarios where two people can see the exact same thing and be like no it was two different things like i don't know where this guy's coming from and i don't know it's just it's weird how the brain operates and how it knows when to do stuff like this reading miguel's comment let me see. So really bad trauma will mask the trauma with something else to protect the sanity uh, in the brain. It's weird. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, our brain is really, really wild. I mean, it's basically just a self-defense mechanism. Read Dana. Read Dana's comment, Dana Dawson. Uh, when I was little... Uh, uh, when I was little and friends with that panther man, I asked my mom if Jungle Book was true or real because I had... I had a talking panther friend like like uh, Mowgli. Dana, get in touch with me and, and give me that story. Tell me about it. Tell me what happened. I would love to either retell it or if you're capable, you can come on and tell it yourself. I know a lot of people just say nah, but um you know, I'm not the, I mean, I'm not the, the the be all end of storytelling. I can retell your encounter, but I, sometimes people like with those, that's something that's unique. I mean, the dog man stories are dime a dozen at this point. I mean, people are, t but you know, that doesn't trivialize it. I'm just saying that there's a lot of them out there, but that is something that you don't hear every day right there. So I would love it for you to come on and talk. Well, about it's that. it's important because since Dogman is now being spoken about more, we need to start getting these other topics spoken about more too. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to get them reached to the same level. Shouldn't it be like certain fads or what leads us to uh, solving these issues. It should just be that we're trying to figure out all of it. Dana says, I definitely don't want to tell the story. You can, but I'm not a great speaker. Well, that's fine. That's what a lot of people, you know. And then, and then it's flattering. There's a lot of people, and these guys can tell you that they'll just be like, "I want Wolf to tell my story." Yeah, um, that happens a lot, you know. Um, and it kind of, kind of, it's a dual-edged sword because you don't get as many people that want to tell the story. Well, I can't tell it as good as you can. You're not. You don't have to tell it as good as I do, right? Just tell it. That's it. You're going to tell me anyway. You might as well tell the audience. That's why I tell people. 
You know, it's the ones that come out and they want to do it. They're like, yeah, 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 say my name, you know, and you're kind of suspicious of that. I mean, listen, I, I am. I'm kind of like, really? And then you kind of wonder, you know, and I've had one guy hounding me for, I'm probably going to not now because I'm saying it, but not going to happen, dude. The Batman, not going to happen. Sorry, dude. I just don't. You're, you're too adamant about you want your name and headlines or whatever. Go to the Inquirer. Probably gonna snip at me now. Whatever, I don't care. Hmm. Dana says I sent you an email with a quick summary a while back. Panther Man. Plus, I think I remember that because I, I get a lot of them. We have a file actually for Catman. You know what we need to do? We need to change it to like make it more specific. So hey, uh, just take stuff and throw it in there and be like, "Well, there you go, into the abyss of stories." And <laughs> see ya. And it just kind of floats away. I imagine it kind of doing that, like on a Super Mario game. Then it goes down into the tunnel. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Dun -dun. <laughs> it's gone. Hey, Mate. D-line people. There you go, Maddie. See, if Maddie would start helping like she's supposed to, we could get these things done and get them organized. But Maddie's not doing it, folks. Maddie's not taking care of business. Feline people. There you go. That's your job, Maddie. I'm going to give that to you. You need to start organizing these things. Get I wanted to... Uh... Read this comment real quick because uh, Mete, she just asked, like, or I don't know uh, what gender they are. I am from Turkey. I have a very interesting gin story, paranormal. My mother's experience. Can I send it to the Facebook page? If you look uh, right on top of where Josh is at, you want to flip the camera back over, you'll see an email right there. It'll go across the screen. Yeah. And it says send your, so so you send your stories up there to that, that right there. Um, Josh Turner at prtpodcast.com. You know what? We don't even say the email anymore. Mm. We, hey, we don't have to. Yeah, it's been it's it's like, the people... YouTube would be like, send us your stories. Come on. Let's hustle them up. Let me go stalk people in the group I'm like a weirdo. And now I'm just like, they're going to send them. I mean, I'm not bragging. I'm not being like, you know, like, hey, I'm somebody. But we get a lot. But, do you know, if you have a good story, see what I said? She's from Turkey. How many times, like the ones from Philippines and then mm -hmm. the ones from Japan, uh, the ones from China, Mexico, all these different places when we start talking about this. Costa Rica. And in fact, I talked to a guy who's doing a, a, a documentary. Um, and he's from Costa Rica. And he he thinks he might know that hotel that I was talking about. I said, dude, because he used to work in a hotel down there. And I said, dude, 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 go do some research on it. Shout out to Joe. I mean, this guy. He's from He lives in San Antonio. I was talking about him yesterday, I think, on the show. Um but yeah, he that that was interesting. And he goes, "Oh yeah." And I told him about it being cursed and he said that's absolutely what happened because they built over those people's uh, you heard them, y'all were in the truck. Yeah. Yeah, and he was yeah. like, "That's what they do. They do it. They did it all the time. They just like, "Oh, these are graves." You know, and let's build a hotel. Oh, guess what? Now a shaman's werewolf is coming around doing stuff. Yeah, no 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 crap. I mean, cuz that's what happens when you do something like that. Have you seen the movie Poltergeist? I mean, it's a, it's not a real thing, but Black Hole Cemetery, like Garitano was talking about, and I did some research on that. Thank you, Jeremy Schneider, for sending me some information on that. But uh, yeah, it was for you know that's what they did. You just don't mess with cemeteries, pet cemetery, poltergeist. Like you just they don't... just threw these people out of their graves, and what? then they just built. And they expected nothing to happen. Yeah, and then they took the headstones down, and some of them. They even, like, they removed the caskets. Like, it was ridiculous. And then, like, put the bodies back in. It was, I'm not joking. Like, they were, they did some crap, dude. And you're like, what the hell? Like, this should be, like, a national news story. They should get the hell suit out of them. You know, it's like, dude, are you crazy? I mean, imagine yeah. if that was your family buried there. I would have been pissed. How many years of life, you know, being celebrated there, just torn away? Torn, thrown out into the, into, nobody does that in any culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's wrong. You know, at some point they're they're probably going to do that with the with the state hospital cemetery here. In they already Austin. did. Like they already did. There's no developers going to buy it up and just like build on top of they, it. They took the graves down already. There's no headstones. Well, yeah, there's no headstones. But I mean, like I thought that that that, that like the, the the bodies were still there. No, because it's a historical landmark. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So they can't do it right. But who knows how long? Eventually, somebody mm -hmm. here in Texas they won't they won't mess with that. They tore down the graffiti oh. park. They can tear it. I mean, graffiti park. <laughs> they tore down Travis House. Who cares about that? Tore down Travis, Travis House. House. Wasn't no historical landmark. It was just a haunted piece of shit. <laughs> I know because I, I was sworn it was. No, it wasn't. <laughs> That's weird. 
No, they don't tear well, down. Well, the, the graffiti park is just because of how many of these. What is your obsession with that? I'm just saying it because of how many of these mm-hmm. idiots around here supported it, and they still tore it down. Let me ask so, you this about the graffiti don't... park, because I got a couple stories about something weird over there. Speaking of, of bats, giant bats, did you? Because did you ever hear about that? You and Scorpion worked. Oh, I worked it during the day a lot, yeah. and at the time, like I could, I could, I could Greg see and Clark it. Clark worked it too. We need to talk to them. I'm not. close. I'm sorry. Greg and Clark worked yeah. it, dude. Um, but yeah, the, they they worked it, so maybe we could talk to them about. I mean, I, I could definitely see it because like it was unkempt as heck up there. Like the grass yeah. was huge; it was really tall. So. There could be something Those moving around. Said that one of the people there almost stepped on a rattlesnake. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, they were over there, like, taking pictures. Look at this. I don't know why they would go there. Yeah, well, and I mean, crap. I was all for them building over. I, 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 oh, I wasn't against I, it. I hated graffiti parties. <laughs> but, like, the so fact that they were able like, to I'll lets you know that they're going to build something on this graveyard. Pot smoking, yeah. whatever. Bunch of idiots. I mean, it looked ugly. Yeah, it's an but eyesore. There was nothing good about it. Mm-hmm. It's just, a it's just of... like teenage girls would go there to post in- Instagram. Those teenage girls are homeless all was. people. Every time I was there, it was like homeless people and teenage kids, yeah. mostly girls. Hanging yeah. around all over the The place. guys would go there because the girls were there. Yeah. yeah. And then there was always girls doing it. I'm going to take a picture at the graffiti park. And you're like, what for what? Because so we got to be security here and watch you, basically. It's ridiculous. So what we end up having here is is this story that these two people had about a werewolf, and then that's that was the end of it. But, you know, what happened to Jack and John, it went on and on and on. I mean, and it went on for the, 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 the duration of the rest of the time they were with their grandma. There was some stuff that happened that we could talk about, but it would be an entire show. So what we're going to do is talk about that possibly on Tuesday. So before I forget, because somebody took my notes, and it was Ellie. So we took my and he tore it out of the notebook, and I was like, "What did you do?" Because there were two stories that I was going to retell, and I had started one of them. And if anybody can remember during this past week, I know it was on YouTube all week, pretty much. Um, it just kind of worked out that way. I don't know, but if you can, if anybody can say, "Hey, let me know." The scarecrow was one of them. I know, but there was another one that I had started to tell, and my gosh, I can't remember what it was. And the notes, it was written down, so I, and I had the file. I could just go, but now I, I don't know what to look for because I can't remember. It was, I didn't commit it to memory like I, I you know, I should have. He's telling the vampire story right today, Dana. Yes, I can tell you one right now. Which one was I talking about earlier? The. Um, let me get you quick. Sorry, folks, but for my bearman, huh? Bearman. No, it wasn't the bearman. Mm-hmm. Oh no, maybe it was that we have a couple of the Bear Man stories. Carlos is another one, but that's not the one I'm telling. I still need to talk to him, but it's very hard because he's missing part of his jaw. So he's not like talking to a normal person. I'm sorry, I got to suckle. This is gonna be awkward, but my throat needs it. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm gonna probably sound really weird. You gotta take care of your voice. Another sound bite from my enemies there. He's talking about sucking on things and he's talking on. <laughs> What's wrong with this man? He's one of them Joneses. <laughs> Alex Jones, Jim Jones, Jerry Jones. <laughs> he's too animated. There gotta be something evil about him. People like him. He's casting spells on people. Talking about an alternate Bible and some weird crap. I told you I like the baby Jesus and that's it. <laughs> People are buying his books. He's enchanting runes into them. <laughs> they like his book. Okay, I'm going to say this, and this guy is probably going to get super pissed. But a guy sent me an email. He wrote a book. I'm not going to say his name. You can go look him up. He wrote a book about a, a, a person having a relationship with the dolphin. Wow. The carnal way. And I'm like, are you serious? And he tells me he wants to come on my show. Are you, are you joking with me? You probably watching, right? They probably getting mad. Yeah, I, I really did not like that. And then you, the, the fact that you played it off like it was just you—you you had been on the Howard Stern show. I could see why. Yeah, Beetlejuice really. Juice is on there too. You know, this is not a freak show. What kind of sickness do you see in me that I would want that on my show? Seriously, I'm actually offended that you would send me that email, dude. Go ahead. I'm not, I'm not gonna say your name because it's you know, probably impolite, whatever. And this may start something. I don't give a crap. But that was really that's that's really goofy that mm-hmm. you and he and you 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 so 
about like like you, like I you, I would be a great guy. I should be on your show. I should be. Why? If you've been on these other big name shows, what do you need me for? Go to Oprah. I don't know what what you know. Smells <laughs> two shadows. <laughs> Dolphins were actually not fish, but <laughs> you know. Go look it up. You know, it's, it's, yeah, this is a real gross. thing. Dolphins are so smart too. Yeah. Dolphin man. No, it's a it's a real thing. I, I was like, I couldn't believe this guy. And come on, he wanted to come on my show and talk about. I'm like, what is, what is, what is there to talk about? What do we do? What does he think we do here? He said he had some other stuff. That at that point, I didn't give a crap what he had because you, you're talking about that. That's just what I deal with. I know we don't deal with the normal, but that's. I mean, it's bad enough the stuff we already got to go through. But then you get to send me that too, and then people are they message me and they're like, "You need me as a guest." He didn't, not him, but it was another one. I said, "Why do I need you? Why do I need you? I need Jesus. That's I don't need anybody. What are you talking about? You're gonna make my show become something amazing because you're gonna come on and talk crazy. But you know what? I guarantee you, he'll get on some shows. There'll be some stupid people out there who are desperate, <laughs> and he'll be on there talking about it." Should I say the name of the book? No, because I don't want people yeah. to actually go read it. Yeah. Give him any money. It's a novel, he said. I don't want to give like him it's any not money. Something that, yeah. It's not something that he... That he I, I, I don't know. I mean, that sure. kind of makes it even worse, though, because it's like... He's dreaming of it. You didn't have to put that in the book because it's not part of something you were writing about. You just, you just did it. It's no, rough. that's the book. It, that's not part of the book. It's just the book. The whole book is about him having, oh, man, not him, but someone. Wrong with people? Now, I don't know if it's a man or a woman that has a relation. Who cares? Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's crazy. Oh, God, dude. What's <laughs> the real this? question is was it a male or female dolphin? I'm surprised you didn't see it in the email, Anthony. You looked at the email sometime. A but, dolphin yeah. needs to file charges. This is what we're talking about, folks. Crazy people. It's like the guy that had me and Nelly going with a, his amazing dog man encounter, and and I won't fall for that again. And then he's like, and then the the, the she wolf smelled me and she wanted to breed. I'm like, are you? I said, dude, get the hell out of here, dude. I was like done with that. And I told Nelly, I was like, yeah. And he had us going. We thought this guy's got some great even stuff. If, even if it was the case, we don't want to hear it. All right, we don't. You just don't want to hear that. It's not what we want to put on the show. There, there, there are things like weird, and then there's like bizarre, just stuff like that. Out yeah, of, of, yeah, yeah. Dolphins are amazing animals, but not in that way. I mean, they're turds, but they're they're smart. Now, I got a I got a vampire story from someone. It was usually in the chat. If you want to tell that story, you come on and you tell it. I'm not gonna tell that story, <clears throat> but I will let you tell it. Okay. That that's my deal to you. You're a vampire. You want to talk about it? Then you come on and tell it. That's my deal. I'm not going to talk about them these vamps. They're they're nasty, dude. I mean Nicholas says you need a vampire story. My emails will help. I sent a story a while back. Please send it again cuz I got, you know, a bunch of stories I get slammed. Yeah, and some of it goes to, to spam. Yeah. Like I gotta go to the junk mail, and there was like a thousand stories in there. And then Anthony, we had to dump like how many of those? Like, what would you say it was twenty four thousand emails? Or what was it? Yeah, I think so. It's ridiculous. I mean, they weren't all stories, but mo mo most of it was junk. But there was, I, I, I'm telling you, it's probably about three or four thousand different pertinent stories or a lot of it was sponsorships too dude we're totally not even capitalizing we're not even capitalizing we're just like whatever man they, and then i mean like, in well, all you honesty you don't give a damn about us and i'm like i didn't say that i'm just really busy like it, with the amount of like sponsorship offers we get we could have one like every 15 seconds i mean it's kind of ridiculous it is but we just kind of don't like but then it would ruin the then the show because then we don't we'd constantly be promoting some product. Yeah, and we were also kind of too, like we kind of well, let the show be how it goes. So like a boy out there on the west coast, though, I'm not gonna say his name because 
His show is totally different than ours. But he, well, I'll just say it, it's Eric. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, he said, he goes, dude, you're missing out on not getting, not being, not doing it, you know. And uh, kind of like what Long Beach does. Yeah. You know, or No Jumper, yeah. how they promote their, like, right before and whatever. And so, so we know, like, other podcasters and other genres and stuff, and they've given us advice, you know, and said, hey, you know, you should take up the sponsorships and they can pay for this and pay for that. But I told them, I said, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think the the audience needs to be inundated with. Um... And then there was this one where they sent us, remember the beard oil? <laughs> yeah. And so I gave huh. it to D. And D's beard, like, chunk of it broke off. <laughs> like, he was like, he's like, hey, check it out, man. You know how he talks? He's like, this was my beard. I'm like. Hey, I'm not responsible for happy juice beard oil, whatever it's called. You know, I'm not going to say the mm-hmm. name of it, but I said, and he goes, well, you try it. And I was like, no, okay, I will. And so I was like, I was like trying to put like, a, he's like watching me like, and so I was like, okay, you know, what older brothers are. And I'm like, okay, all right, fine. Let me wait. What's the worst that could happen? So I tried to like turn. <laughs> and I had him and Scorpion both looking at me. I said, okay, look, y'all used it. Scorpion said nothing happened to his. But but that that was because his beard wasn't as long as me and D's. So Scorpion said, nothing happened to mine. So then I said, okay, so I did it. And then, like, the next day, and I showed Nelly, it was like, I was like, what the hell? Like, it shatters your beard like glass. <laughs> like, why would I sick that on my audience? Like, what kind of sacrifice to my audience? Like, here you go, try this, and enjoy kind of horrible it sounds like someone who can't grow a beard made that product and they were going to pay us pretty good i mean it was a neat neat little payday whatever but i was like i'm not going to go up there and peddle that crap to my audience what the hell would i be what kind of person would i be to do that mm. okay so this the, the vampire story now we have two or three of them in the chamber that i could give you but i want to save this one for, to, waiting for more information, and actually, one of them is well, they were just in the in the chat. And Nicholas, please resend your vampire encounter. Uh, I saw you, the other person that sent me the vampire story. If you want to, I mean, you can come on right now if you want. You're in the chat. I saw you lurking around. <laughs> you want to tell your story? Um, in the dark. I'm not gonna say your name if you don't want to. If you don't want me to say it. You don't have to say your real name for sure, but you can come on and you don't have to be on the screen either. You can just be a voice and you can say. Last night I had Starscream and, and, and Scorpion on at the end, you know, after the, the show or whatever. And it was the last, you know, hour or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And uh, both of them tried to stay off the camera. And I was like, uh-uh, no, uh-huh. you, I won't be up, you're going to be up here too. So eventually Scream did, but Scorpion wouldn't do it. And he was <laughs> like, no, I'm not going to do it. It's so really a blessing. Scare people, man. I was gonna say it was a blessing to everyone. Like that was the greatest <laughs> gift. Scorpion, like you're like, mm, fire! Bah! That's what I always tease him. I say he looks like Frankenstein's monster. He's a very intimidating looking guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I could see why he he's the guy that we use to negotiate with Queen Boudica, because she called me handsome. Right? She called Scorpion gruesome. So. <laughs> No, for real, she did. She goes, well, you big old handsome. And she called me Matt Dillon from Gunsmoke. And I was like, well, thank you. She's like, you're quite the tall man. And she's over there, like, talking about she's going to let, I'll let you live. I'm like, you have two guys with spears. Okay, lady, what what are you doing? I mean, not to be ugly or rude, but because, you know, we, we, we call the truce. But what do you, I mean, they're carrying spears. Like, come on. They're not even modern weapons. They're just sticks. Okay, I get it. Y'all play by different rules out there in Lord of the Flies or whatever. <laughs> but then she told me Scorpion was a gruesome man. Yeah, it's because his base face is angry. Like he has a very stern, <laughs> yeah. like... He doesn't he, have a nice look to him at all. He's just, like, relaxed. His face contorts into just an angry, like, Neanderthal kind of shape. He has a very unsavory look about him. When you're talking to him, he, like, you know, looks all normal and stuff. But when, when, he, when like, he goes back to it, it's like, yeah, relaxing. It's like his whole face just relaxes in the caveman. Resting caveman face. I mean, it's no offense to you, Scorp. Are they even in the chat? I don't see I don't see them. I don't think so. Message them and say, what are y'all doing? You're not even moderating. You're just letting Miguel and, and Maddie do it all. Uh, 
So, okay, I just saw you again. Somebody want to talk about their story? It's up to you. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna push you, but you can message me if you want to. I know you. I see, I see you lurk, and I know you're here. You got the floor. If you want to come on and talk, uh, if not, then huh? Scorp's here. Oof. <laughs> I didn't want him to think we were insulting him behind his back. <laughs> 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 want to make sure you heard those, Scorp. <laughs> Say it again. So. Can... What is it? <laughs> Scorp's, Scorp's gonna pop you next time he sees. You. Well, that's like you know. Scorp's Don't forget. Like, he's very protective of me too. Yeah. Like whenever those people came to me, Scorpion's a true friend. Like he got in between me and them. And that lady was like, oh, your bodyguard. And I'm like, well, he's disposable. I'm not. I'm I'm more special. I'm kidding, Scorpion. You know I don't feel like that. I'm just, we're equal. We're all equal. But, uh, you know, really? Come on now. Is that what we're doing? Okay. All right. You're not going to tell the story? All right. That's fine. I, I know. I know what you... What your handle is, I could expose you, but you, you know, this, all right, fine. We're not going to do it. At least message me to say, hey, I'm not going to do it. So I know that there's, then, then I can, I can go on. Had a cool reptilian story. So here we go. Um, th this the, there was there's three different ones, and like I said, one of them keeping I'm going to talk about, and of course the other one is Carlos's story, and I still need to flesh that out because there's more to it. But I can't. He types not very good. Um, he's practically well, no, he is. He's basically disabled, and so he can't really, you know, it, it, it was <laughs> it took a toll on him big time. But this is what I got to tell you. Uh, there was a guy who got in touch with me, we'll call him Brandon, and um, he basically told me a story about a vampire that affected his life, and it was weird. It was like, you know, he was living with his aunt, he was at his aunt's house, they were living together, and it was out in New Mexico, and uh, Santa Fe to be exact, and they were, they had they had a house together, whatever, his, and his uncle had left well, they had split up because he was an alcoholic. It was not, let's just be honest. And so what ended up happening, she started dating a guy. And, then, and now when he started telling me about this, and when I, I, I jokingly said, you take it off? I jokingly said something to him about it. I said, this sounds like the plot of Fright Night, you know, or whatever, because there was this guy that was. Uh, no, we're good. I don't, I don't think we're good. Um, are you going to, to uh, start or what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, do what you got to do. Yeah, exactly. Let's go, Brandon. Brandon. See you guys later. Nobody saw the camera that. wasn't on. Yeah, I saw that. Okay, like, we'll turn the camera on. Let him say goodbye. Come say bye. If that's what you want to do. See you, everybody. All right. Be careful. Be safe. Uh, don't let the vampires bite. So, or the homeless people eat you. So what ends up happening, he, he starts, you know, he says, yeah, he goes, he goes, but all joking aside, we kind of joked around or whatever, but he was very honest about this. He said, she started dating this guy and he was always doing stuff at his church. So Lavino, thank you for that donation. Thank you for always coming through. <clears throat> Bye, mask is mouse. So what ended up happening is that this person, uh, I can't say if she's saying goodbye to Tony or whatever. Anyways, this person was, was always doing things at his church, as he called it. What's weird, though, what's really weird, was that he never told him the name of his church. He said, I started asking him, what, what church is this? 
And then he always would change the subject or he would flip the conversation. He goes, and I realized after a month, never getting any information about this guy's church that he supposedly went to. I didn't believe it existed. He says, I couldn't pin him down. He was like a moving target. He was real slippery. So finally he goes, one day I just confronted him. He goes, and I'm not no, no little dude. I'm a big dude. He's like, and I'm not no big, you know, amazing, tough guy. He goes, but I can fight. And he goes, I'm pretty tough. And he goes, and I used to be in a street gang. He goes, and I gave my life back to God. He goes, and I actually did have to go through AA. And, and I, I, you know, I, I, I do go to church on occasion. He said, and I told him, I said, I'd like to invite you to my church. Right? So Brandon was smart about that. He says, you know, I said, why don't you go to church with me? And he's like, I met some people through AA, you know, and, um, no, I think it would be cool to have you go. He's like, you seem to know a lot about the Bible. And, um, you know, at this point, he was not thinking the unthinkable, that this guy was some sort of demon, creature of the night person. He's like, I had no inkling that this dude could have been what it turned out he was. And he said, this is what I, what happened, Wolf. He called me Wolf. I appreciate that. Friends call me that. And he said, he goes, I found out things about this guy that I never would have dreamed were real. He goes, and I wouldn't be telling you this. He goes, I've been watching your show for two years. He's like, I don't comment much. You know, he goes, I'm in the chat. I'm sure you're here. You're there right now, Brandon. Hello. And to your aunt, um, nice to, uh, nice to meet you. Um, but she was blinded by love. She loved this guy. And he goes, my aunt was a good looking woman. He's like, she could have had other guys, you know. She just ended up with a rotten husband and was mean and, you know, disrespectful. And Brandon says, but this guy, he goes, there was something about him. He goes, I did not like him. He goes, and, I, he goes, and I'm not like the holiest person. He goes, but I could feel the Holy Spirit tugging at me, telling me, no, no. Every time this guy, and then he goes, the first time he came over was even, was like a dead giveaway. And I'll get this. Come on, Brandon. <laughs> but seriously. So what he says, he says, so, you know, I told my aunt, I sat her down and I said, you know, I, I asked him, we we'll call him Albert. That was his name. Whatever. That's what he went by. It's, I don't think that was his real name. He said, I asked Albert to go to the church with us. And she goes, oh, really? She's like, yeah, I've been asking him for a while. And as he said, no, he didn't want to go. He said, and I'm surprised that he didn't say, hey, why don't you go to my church? He's always talking about doing things for his church. He said, and my aunt was blinded to the point where she didn't question any of his ridiculous, flimsy excuses. And he goes, what I mean is like, for real, like my aunt was just like totally in love with this dude, man, from the beginning. He goes, but I saw through it. It was all a facade. Supposedly, he had an ex-wife and two kids. Supposedly. He said, one time he said that his ex-wife's name was Maria. He goes, and then another time he said her name was Mary. Now, he said, Maria, Mary, I can get that. But but how would you make that mistake if you were with this person? Yeah. You had two kids. And Maria's usually don't call themselves Mary, let's be honest. I know Mary. My mother's name was Mary, Mary Ann. And I have no people who are named Maria, Latinas or whatever. And then they call themselves Maria. And I know Marys, and they're, they don't call themselves Mary or Maria. It's one or the other. They don't call themselves the same. And I said, yeah, that's very odd. I said, but what else? He said, I tried to get his last name. He gives me this Armenian last name, like Sarkisian or something like that. He says, and I tried looking him up. There was no Albert by that last name that I could find that fit any description, like that, like that fit his description even remotely. He said, so then I asked him, I, I confronted him. I said, let me ask you a question, Albert, if that's even your real name. He said, the guy looked all indignant. And he says, who are you really? He said, I'm thinking this guy is somebody that's on the lam, you know, or maybe he's 
deceitful. Maybe he's one of those people with two families. So what ended up happening? Yeah, it's actually a very common, Sarkeesian is actually a very common uh, uh, last name. That's not the last name he gave. It was like something else. But anyways, <clears throat> he said, dude, he goes, you say you're Armenian, right? He's like, but it's odd. I can't find any records of you. And then he says, you say you go to a church, but you can't tell me anything about it. And he says, oh, it's a, it's an Orthodox Armenian church. It's very old. So at that point, he told him, he says, yeah, yeah, there, there's not many here in town, whatever. And he goes, in fact, there's not any. He told the guy, he goes, there's not. He goes, I knew you were going to say something like that because you're Armenian and predominantly that's your religion. And he's like, but there's not. The information you give is all wrong. It's not correct. And he's like, and I, I think that you need to stop playing games and tell us who you are. He says, well, I think your your aunt will think differently. And he goes, I finally sat my aunt down. He goes, and I had a talk with her. So when he comes over to eat dinner tonight, because he goes, he was making pasta for them to eat. And he said, I'm going to I'm gonna confront him, and you're going to have to be strong. And she's like, okay, okay, yeah, all right. As soon as he shows up, she's just like, like a zombie, like in a trance. He said, and everybody else was too. He goes, my other aunt and my uncle come over. And Brandon's like me. He's half Hispanic, half white. But he goes, they come over, and they're just enthralled by this guy, Matia, Matio, that's aunt and uncle. He's like, they were just like, oh, he's such a wonderful guy. Oh, mijo, you need to stop messing with him. He's a good dude. He said, Dad, that's not, no, Armenians are not their own religion. No. So he says, his uncle tells him, he says, you're just, you're just, you know, after everything he told his uncle, his uncle was a mechanic. He said, I went over to his shop and I told him, I said, Theo, there's something wrong with this dude. And then he goes, yeah, okay, we'll get to the bottom of it. But then he meets the guy and everybody's under the same spell with this guy. He said, so get this. He goes, I bought one of those trackers. He's like, so I stick it up underneath his vehicle. Just to see. Right? He goes, we don't even know where he lives. He goes, I figured out he was living in an apartment across the city. He's like, and then he goes, I learned something. This guy was lying. He's talking about going to church, going to church, going to church. He didn't go anywhere. And he never came outside until it was dark. <laughs> he goes, he didn't work. He didn't work. He goes, and then I considered breaking into his apartment while he was gone. Because I knew when he was there and when he wasn't. He goes, so then he's like, I go up to the window and I look into his apartment. You know, it's in a kind of a bad area, you know. He goes, nobody's really paying attention to me. And he's like, and I'm looking through the window. He goes, and I can see. He's like, there's nobody in there. So I thought, well, maybe I should go in, you know. He said, no sooner had I gone to the front door than I heard this, what sounds like Cujo on the other side of that door. And he's like, and it was loud and heavy and big. And it was slamming itself into the front door. And I backed up and I was like, whoa, what the hell is that? A dog, obviously. So he goes back around to the window where he can look in and he looks and he doesn't see anything. He doesn't see, there's nothing there. And he thought, this is weird. And it's getting weirder. So then he talks to the guy when he comes over to visit his aunt and they're going to get ready to go to the movies. And he says, he says, Albert. Let me ask you a question. He said, uh, where do you live? And Albert tells him, he goes, well, I've, we've, we've been over this before. He goes, yeah, but you've never told me. He says, well, I have a house out just outside of town. Lie, another lie. He said, oh, really? Huh, that's funny. He's like, because I remember you saying something about a ranch and all this other stuff that you know, whatever. He goes, but um, I don't, I don't believe that. He says in front of his aunt. And then he confronts him. He said, in fact, he goes, 
I'm going to be real honest. I know you live in an apartment across town and you have a dog. And he says at that point, his aunt, he tells the guy, Albert, tells his, his girlfriend, his, his, his aunt, she, he says, he says, honey, can, can we be alone for a minute? And she's like, no, whatever you have to say, say in front of me, whatever. And she's all like, you, you've crossed, you know, you've crossed uh, the line with this and blah, blah, blah. She's giving him the rundown. Yes, there is a right and a wrong way to wrap a hand, right, Anthony? Yeah. Yes. For for, for, well, for boxing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Anthony can actually do a video if you wanted, and we can show it to somebody on YouTube or whatever. Not on YouTube, but on Facebook. So whenever he he confronts him, he says, you know, this is the thing. He goes, you're always kind of like running my aunt. She's just kind of okay with everything. He's like, but you're a liar. He's like, you're fake. He's like, because I found your apartment, dude. And he goes, oh, well, that's an invasion of privacy. He goes, I didn't go into your apartment because of your dog. And then he says it in front of the aunt. He goes, I don't have a dog. He goes, oh, you do? I heard it. And then he said at that point, nothing supernatural had happened up to this point. That had been almost two months. He said it was about six weeks of this crap. He's like, I don't even know how we could stand it. It was ridiculous. And he goes, and then his eyes yellowed up like amber. They glowed for a second. He goes, in his eyes, he just stared at me. And then he says, my aunt was just kind of standing there looking straight ahead at the wall like a robot. And he's like, he grabbed my arm. He goes, and I tried to pull away. He's like, I said, I'm a big dude. And I was getting ready to punch this guy. He goes, and he held my arm with just a couple fingers. And he's like, leans in and he tells him, you have no idea what you're messing with. He's like, and if you would like things to be cordial, but maybe you should just mind your own business, boy. He said that. He got really upset. He was like, he's calling me a boy, like a child, you know, like dismissing me. And then he throws his hand like that, and he goes, I said, well, here's the thing, Albert. You're not taking my aunt out. He said, my aunt, at this point, she was, he was like, just, she was staring at the wall, not moving. Like one of the Stepford wives. And he's like, he tells him, he says... I don't think that I want you in this house. You need to leave. And then he says, why don't you make me? And he starts getting in my face. He goes, and this guy's skinny. Thank you for that donation. Uh, Melissa says, okay, everybody, let's try to hit a goal of 100 donations. <laughs> we can do it. I don't know if you could do that. That'd be amazing. That'd be like a, some kind of record. But um, thank you for caring, though. We appreciate it. But here's what happens. He gets in his face. And he says, at this point, he goes, I went to shove him. And when I did, his hands came up so fast and grabbed my hands and he squeezed. And he goes, it was like a wrestling move. And I was on my knees and I was like, okay, please stop, please. And the guy was like, no. And he said, and when he spoke, it was like demonic, like a demon coming out of his, you know, his, his voice was demonic. I'll attempt to, you know, when, when, when. When he did that, it was, it sounded pretty, <laughs> like, I told Brandon, I was like, oh, it sounds kind of creepy, dude. <laughs> um, but he was like, you have no idea what you're messing with. It was like that. I can't even do it justice. And he says, dude, I look up at this guy. He goes, and my aunt had, was not there. She had gone off into the bedroom for whatever reason. Wasn't even paying attention. And he said, he looks down, he gets his head as close to mine as he could without kissing me, his words. He says, and I look. And he said that his teeth, right here, incisors, were down like a freaking vampire's. Need some voice acting practice. I can do good voices, I just can't do the voice the way he did it. You know, it was like, oh, no, you're not going nowhere. You know, that kind of, I can't do it like he did, you know. I don't, no, they did not. I do not believe they ever did that lead you reality. Oh, no. They're no. still unsolved to yep. this day. I think uh, one of our listeners in the chat, uh, I, I think her name is Mystical Wonderland. She, she said that when she went to UT, she lived next door to like, two weirdos who she believes were vampires and they were investigated for those murders. Yeah. Um, I, I, I used to work 
with a guy uh, named Mike who was dating one of those girls. Who was actually dating one of those girls. And Mike was a weird guy. And after that happened, I guess, um, because I worked with him in the mid-90s or whatever. It was long after that. But he had gone downhill big time. And he became, like, morbidly obese. He was already, Mm. like, really heavy when I was working with him. And he was, like, barely, like, just, like, immobile. You know what I mean? Like, and... um, Anyway, his name was Mike, and he talked about it one day to us. It really destroyed his world. But anyways, so what happened happened was this guy, this vampire, doing what he did, was leaning in on this guy. And Brandon goes, he goes, you know, Wolf, I look up, and I see that this dude is not a normal human being. He goes, and I'm thinking this guy is going to turn into some kind of monster. And then I realized that was... This is him. You know, this this is him. You know, he's a monster. And then he lets me go. He goes, and then I start to stand up and he kicks me back down. Just barely moved his leg and I flew across the room. Superhuman, supernatural strength. And the dude says, I'm really getting tired of your shit. And then he told me, he says, I'm going to make your aunt part of my coven. He goes, straight up told me that. He goes, he walked over to me. He goes, and then he popped me in the face so hard that I was unconscious. And he's like, and when I woke up, nobody was in the house, and I was sitting in the dark, and I jump up, and I'm like, where's everybody at? He goes, and I had this huge knot on my head, and I had to go to the emergency room. And then I was pissed. He goes, I was very pissed. I had a concussion. Headaches for days. He goes, and my aunt was gone. She had taken off with him and just left me laying there. And then the next day I confronted her about it. I told her everything that happened, and she didn't remember anything. She's like, it was like it didn't happen. So what ended up happening? Well, you're going to have to tune in next Sunday because I'm not going to tell you right now. Good night, folks. It's been nice. Happy <laughs> Easter. Thank you, everybody. I'm joking, folks. Can you imagine if I did that to you? I'm not going to do We're that. We're going to put too. the rest of it behind a $20 paywall. Yeah, I'm going to put it behind a paywall. So you got to pay me to get this guy's story. And then he goes and tells it on somebody else's show. And then like, <laughs> we already saw it on Matt Imps' show. I don't know why you're, you know, whatever. So that, damn. What the heck? Um, we all got to stick together. We get these stories and pretend like that we own them. You own this story. You can't retell it. But so anyways, what Brandon told me, he says, look, he says, this was ridiculous. Like this guy had embedded himself into our lives. He goes, and he knew everything we were doing. And then he puts the, the tracker that I had on his vehicle, puts it in an envelope and gives it back to me. Dickhead. He mailed it to me. And then... He's like, I like to jog, right? He goes, one night I'm jogging and I'm so angry and I'm, and I'm scared. I'm freaked out. And he goes and he pulls up next to me in his stupid convertible. And he says, get in. And I told him no. And he says, I said, get in. He goes, this is an order, not a request. But he did. He's like, I got in. He goes, let's go for a drive. And he started driving way too fast, freaking taking curves, going crazy, driving like nuts. He's like, this guy did not give a damn. He goes, and we go right up to his apartment. And he says, get out. I'm going to show you something. He's like, I'm not getting out of this car. He goes, I could see people walking around, moving around, whatever. He goes, I felt safer outside. And I thought, well, if I just sit here. He goes, nothing's going to happen. He's like, these people are oblivious. He's like, you might as well be invisible. He goes, to prove my point, he pulls out a gun. He's like, I kid you not. This guy pulled out a 9 millimeter and just pointed it right at me. And there was a guy walking right by with his pit bull and didn't even give a crap. Didn't even notice them. Almost like they were under a spell, you know. He goes, you see that? Nobody notices. Nobody gives a crap. And then he said he did something else, which was really amazing to this dude. He tells Brandon, he goes, watch this. And he fires three shots in the air. Bang, bang, bang. He goes, I'm sitting there in utter shock. And I'm going like, nobody else is noticing this. There's people walking around and nobody, there's people talking on their phones. Nobody gives a crap. 
He goes, you see, nobody cares. He said, get out. I'm going to tell you one more time. He gets out of the vehicle and he walks up to the apartment and he opens the door. And he says, what about your dog? He goes, I told you, I don't have a dog. And they go inside and he's sitting there and he feels something sniffing him. He hears it. He even smells like a wet dog, but he can't see it. It's invisible. And he's going like, what is this? And he goes, do you want to see what that is? And he sets the gun down on the table. He goes, my instinct was to grab the gun. And the guy was like, nope. And he goes, touch that gun and watch what happens. And he said he moved so fast around the other side of the table because I couldn't believe it. He goes, at this point, I'm like, don't know what this invisible thing is in front of me, and I don't know what this guy is. I don't know what the hell he is. And Brandon doesn't, he's not a weak dude. You can tell, but, you know, he's not no, but he's patsy. And he tells this guy, he's like, dude, what the F are you? He goes, well, some people would call me a vampire. Some people call me a demon. He's like, but I'm just Albert to you. That's all you need to know. He goes, and my pet is not a dog. He goes, it's a familiar. Some people call them hellhounds. He goes, and he looks down. He goes, and I see this demonic black and brown dog that looks like a cross between a Doberman Pinscher and the devil. He goes, I'm not joking. The ears were real weird looking, rigid, and it just it looked like there was a spine on its back. It looked bizarre. He goes, I can't even tell you. The eyes were like real far apart and weird looking. The head looked like something like mixed with a goat, like a werewolf mixed with a goat. It was, it was an incredible looking being. You need to get a coffee or something? Yeah. He says, so I'm sitting there. He goes, and I'm looking at this thing. And I'm like, what, what is this? And I'm thinking, what in the hell? This is not happening. This is a nightmare come to life. This man has taken over my, my aunt's mind. And then he tells him, he says, you know, you're a big, strong guy. And he goes, they look for guys like us. Because he heard me talking about Gerald. He said, and it doesn't surprise me because they want to recruit big, strong people to do what they do. He said, you have a quality that we can use. You're strong and you're tough. You know how to fight. He goes, imagine being able to just beat the crap out of people. You know, he's like, I can already do that. I don't need, uh, he goes, no, no, no. Not like we can. He's like, trust me. He goes, and you, this is weird too. He says, he goes, I'll give you the choice. I mean, you can, you can be something else. You don't want to be a vampire. How about if you could change into an animal, a bird, a deer, a wolf, or maybe a bear? And he's like thinking about it, and he was just like, I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. So he tells him, he says, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm never going to do I'm not going to be okay with that. He goes, okay, then I'm going to take your aunt. He said, at that moment, he goes, I had this rush of adrenaline. I was so angry. He goes, I thought, you know what? I'm going to get up and I'm going to smack this dog and this dude. He goes, and I, had, I was losing my fear. He goes, and I'm going to get out of this damn house, this apartment. He goes, I can hear stuff going on, sirens and people doing stuff outside. And I'm like in this stuck in this box with this guy. He goes, and it's like nobody notices any of this. The guy came and walks me in with a gun. And he's like, what, what in the hell? Who, who are these people? He says, and then I get knock on the door. He says, and I'm sitting in this chair, like an office chair, and he spins me around. And he goes and opens the door. And these two, the only way I could describe them is witches. They, they were like women wearing cloaks. And they walked in. 
And they were like, is this the guy? And they're like, he's like, yeah, here he is right here. And they told him, they sat down with him and they said, look, you're acting like you have a lot of options here. You don't. And you're, it's your own fault for getting involved in whatever we were doing. They're like, see, your aunt is already one of us. She just doesn't remember. See, because what they did was they gave her this wine mixed with blood, which is, enables these beings to control her. This is what Brandon was telling me. And I believed him because that's exactly what Joel was saying, that, that that was one of their little tricks. Now, get this, folks, and I want you to hear what I'm going to tell you. Please do not listen to what I'm going to tell you. If you care, I mean, this is Easter night. I'm going to tell you, please listen to what I'm going to tell you. These women will take something. Now, listen, this is going to sound gross and disgusting, but you need to hear what I'm going to say. They'll make a spaghetti sauce or something. And they'll put blood in it. I've heard that before, independently of this story. He said, I looked down and that dog was like just growling at me. He goes, and I wasn't religious and I realized I was a target. He goes, I was not right with God. He's like, I was slipping away. I wasn't going to church anymore. I wasn't going to AA. I wasn't doing anything. He goes, and in fact, I was so stressed out. He goes, I, I took a little drink. I shouldn't have. He goes, and then a little drink became a bigger drink, and then I got really drunk. And then he goes, I remembered one of those girls, the redhead. She was a bartender. She made me a drink. And they started laughing. And of course, you know, I'm telling you the story the way that I'm telling you. This isn't how he told it to me. It was just kind of like bam, bam, bam. But you get where I'm going. He said, I look up and it's her. And she smiles all big with her big ass ugly fangs sticking out, both of them. And she's like, did you enjoy it? You wanted another one. I made it for you. She's like, see, that's the problem. You people think you have all the answers, and you think that you're leading in the race. And I've said this before. When he said that, I thought it was funny. Um, but you're so far behind. That's why you think you're winning. You've been lapped over and over again. And knowing what I know about these beings and knowing that they do have that other, it gives them that advantage over us. But we have the trump card that nobody remembers until their back's against the wall. And I told him, I said, did you, were you saved at that point? He said, yeah, I, I, I was saved. And he said, at that point, he goes, I re remember that I had God. I had Jesus backslid as I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing. He's like, I remember my aunt, one of the sweetest ladies on earth, took me in when I was young with my, for my abusive dad, stood between him and me. Well, he waved a knife around in her face. She says, you know, if you're going to hurt him, you're going to have to hurt me. Between me and my mother, we were on the floor having been beaten by, our da by my dad. And she's like, if you're going to hurt them, you're going to have to hurt me. And she was holding in her hand a small little pocket knife, and she was waving it around in his face. And by the grace of God... She said, you are not welcome here. Get out. And he left. Said he'd be back. He was going to do something really bad to us, right? But he left. He never came back. I didn't see him again, he goes, until I was older. He goes, and I saw him one day. He was all dying of cirrhosis. I wanted to kick him in his balls. He goes, but I didn't. My aunt held my hand and told me, don't do it. He goes, my mother was never the same. She had a head injury. And eventually did something to her because she died. 
He goes, I know that what he did to my mother, he killed my mother, basically, and got away with it. So he goes, these thoughts are going through my head, and this witch, vampire, whatever the hell she is, she leans forward and she says, oh, she's like, you want revenge? It's real easy. Somebody makes you mad, especially somebody that's, you know, not of God. You can hurt them real easy. You can tear them limb from limb. Never get in trouble. It's like a get out of jail free card that just keeps on giving. And they all laugh. And then he kind of laughed. He's like, at this point, he goes, I stood up, brave as it was. He stood up. And he says, I'm leaving. And then they're like, no, you're not. And he says, when this man goes to touch my shoulder, I threw his arm off and I said, in the name of Jesus, I'm leaving. Good night. Bad night. Whatever you want, I'm out. Goodbye. And then the dog steps up and he was like, in the name of Jesus, I'm leaving. Goodbye. I'm leaving. And he's like, they stopped and they, they were stunned and they just looked at him. And then one of them tried to get brave and she stood up and she goes, oh, you think this is a movie where you cry out to your God and we are scared and we fall? He goes, absolutely, I do, in the name of Jesus. And he's like, he said, there was a beer bottle there and I just smacked it like that. And it flew up at a weird ankle and caught her right upside the head. He's like, I didn't even try to do that. He goes, and I opened the door and walked out. I look back in the, in the apartment, and he goes, and there were three sets of eyes looking at me, amber glowing eyes, and then a set of green eyes that was lower to the ground, and that, that was that devil dog or whatever the hell it was, that monster that they had in there. And he said, dude, I was scared to death, and I thought, I'm going to die, but I'm not afraid to die. And get this, and this is why... This story is so important tonight on Easter because what Brandon told me, he says, you know what? You know what I thought about? I thought about Christ and something that I had pondered years ago as an alcoholic. I went to AA and I told my story and he goes, and I sat there and I remember talking about Christ on the cross. And I said, if Jesus could die for us, then we should live for him. Right? He got his first chip. You know how they give you the chip or whatever? He says, and I said this. I'm sober by his grace. Jesus shed his blood for me. The least I could do is not drink this poison. He goes, and they were able to sneak that blood into me. He's like, and that's why he was able to do the things he was able to do to me. Two reasons. And this is what I told Brandon. I said, that blood was in you. And then you had all but shooken off Christ. It was just an afterthought. Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks, Jesus, you you know, whatever, yeah. So what ended up happening? He says, I walked all the way home. I see them get in their convertible. They drive past me. He goes, it's something I knew. I knew they were going to see my aunt. I called her. I said, look. I said, listen to me, pray with me. And so he goes, I prayed with her, the Lord's Prayer. He goes, and then I prayed. I prayed. I go, I was in the middle of the street, Wolf. He goes, I got down on the curb. I got down on the curb in the middle of this city in New Mexico. And I I, I was on the curb, knees on the curb, and I prayed to God. And I said, God, take this evil off of me, off of my aunt. Make her remember all this, what they were doing was, was, was satanic. It was evil. They were giving her blood, making her a zombie. He says, he goes, you got to remember. He goes, think about your salvation. And she's like, what? Like kind of confused. And he's like, remember, think about it. He said, when I was a kid, she painted a picture of of Jesus on the cross. She's a very good artist. He's like, I'll never forget it. He goes, as a child, I looked at this picture. And my brother, his brother had passed away, sadly, drug addiction. He said, we looked at it and we cried. And he said, and this is what he said, and this touched my heart when you said this, Brandon, you did. And um, thank you for telling me this, but it brought back a lot of feelings from my aunt. I remember 
good people in my life that were there for me when my own parents weren't. And he said, I look at that picture and it was Jesus dying on the cross. And he said, it was the day before Easter. He said, and the next day we're at church and all I could think about was Christ's suffering. And then this, something just came over me and I thought, it's not about the suffering because he did it for us. He would do it again and again and again. But his resurrection, he goes, and the whole time I had my eyes closed, he goes, and all I could think about was his resurrection. And I thought, that's it. He is the resurrection and the life. Though, those that believeth in him, though he were dead, yet shall he live. You remember when Jesus saved Lazarus? Look it up. Open your Bible and read the New Testament like you're supposed to. Look it up. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying. I talked about Lazarus and Jesus. When my mother passed, I did a eulogy. Oh, death, where is thou sting? Jesus says, what, what is it? It's nothing. Jesus defeated it. He went to hell for us. You know that? He went to hell. People say different reasons why he went to hell. He went to hell to minister to those that were there. He spoke to the fallen that were in Tartarus. We talked about it on the show last night. I know some of you don't like that show because it's been labeled as the Anunnaki show. It's not about the Anunnaki. It is about the alien agenda. You can learn a lot from that show. Dr. Bertram was on there from Australia, a wonderful guy, and, and Jason McLean, Chris James. We had a great time, great, great conversation. You can learn something instead of these pious morons that are going around trying to stop you. Don't let them win because I'm not the bad guy, believe me. I'm a reteller of stories. So one of my enemies called me a glorified storyteller, so be it. But listen to the words I'm speaking. So this guy, he tells me this, and what he says is very important because he says, you know, I was thinking about it, and when I thought about the resurrection, I thought this is the day of celebration of the resurrection. I'm not going to think about his death. We thought about that on Friday. But those days between his physical death and his resurrection, he was in hell. He took the keys of life and death. Prior to that, I could tell you all about that. What was like? The Epic of Gilgamesh, which is a Persian story. One of the things that they said, your only hope was to eat ash. If you were good, you could just sit at a table with your friends and eat ash. Not a very pleasant thought. The world was wicked. You know, the days of Noah, kind of like now. I was pointing, I was, that's the Patreon there. If you're interested in the Patreon, that's, that's it right there. I haven't said it or whatever, but. I wasn't pointing at that. I was just saying kind of like now. Amy Krill, have you ex ex considered sharing experiences? Well, whoever wants to share their experiences, send them to me. I got all kinds of stuff that we can talk about. So I talked to Brandon. And I told him, I said, this is a very powerful story. And I said, I wish you would tell this story, but... Brandon is self-conscious because he st stutters a little bit. It's kind of, you, Anthony, you, you kind of stutter a little bit too. Yeah. Um, but I told him, I said, I understand. And he's a very powerful person, spiritually. Unfortunately, he has this, he's subconscious about stuttering, but that's don't let that stop you. And I told him, I said, did you... When you stood up before all those people, when you got your first chip and you, you gave your testimony, did you stutter? He says, no, I didn't. I said, I don't think you would. 
I said, I think that more people need to come forward and talk. I said, because I'm not saying that this is going to happen. It's some magical thing, but God's got you, believe me. Because when you come forward and you tell it like it is, the Spirit flows through you. And it'll give you the, the, the base, what you need. One of the worst things that happens, it makes me so angry, is some of these people have told me they're laying in bed, being accosted by these demons, these devils, and they won't, they can't talk. They're, and they're scared to scream out, in the name of Jesus, leave. They're terrified. And they'll tell me, I couldn't say it. I'm like, what do you mean you couldn't say it? I said, a moment of courage and it's done. That's all you got to do. It's really that simple. One moment of courage and faith can end their torment on you. Now you got to be ready because they're going to fight back. They're not going to want to do what you say. See, they didn't like Jesus. They knew who he was. They weren't a fan. They didn't like acknowledging that he was the son of man because to say that, Jesus would always say, I'm the son of man. He liked that. I like that about him. Jesus was my man. You know why? Because when he said, I'm the son of man, he's acknowledging that he's a man sent here to do a job that was to bring us out of all of this misery. And he gives you dominion over these spiteful, demonic, evil beings and their human puppets. And that's what you are. You're a puppet. You think you're strong and you got all this power and you can read minds and do all kinds of things, but in the end, you're still just subject to the will of God. And you can only do so much. And you can only do it to those who aren't saved. Let's be honest. Because that's what I'm researching and that's what I'm starting to learn. And this is not slanting it either. This is the truth. I'm not a propagandist. I'm just telling you the truth. And here we are yet again. Another person has come forward and said, look, this is what happened. And I got two or three in the, in the email. If you're listening, I'd love for you to tell your story. Don't be afraid. It just takes a little bit of courage. Nicholas, you're right, and one can accept it or deny it. In fact, Nicholas, I think you talking about a werewolf uh, vampire story. Look, folks, it's up to you. You do you. I'm not going to preach and tell you what to do. I'm just telling you what I've been told and what I know to be true. And this isn't one of those, these are my truths. No, this is the truth. When this situation happened to him, he said, I was praying and praying and praying with my aunt. He got up. I said, stay on the phone with me, Thea. And I kept walking and I walked and I walked. And guess what? I see this car going back the other way. It was douchebag and his two friends. The bartender and the other one. The ugly one, as you call it. <laughs> but the bartender was very pretty and conned him into drinking blood. If you get a bad feeling from somebody, maybe you should go with your gut. Beth, was actually my editor for my books, a very, very nice person. Beth says, even if you can't say it out loud, say it in your head. It works. It's worked for me many times. I say it in my head, but then I also reaffirm it out loud. Say the Lord's Prayer. Diablo's attachment. Okay, that's a, that's a story for another time, you know, but my brother did have an attachment because he was, you know, Involved in the occult and, and, um, yeah. The thing though, 
mask is, is the, the pretty bartender and the ugly one. Dang. You got to remember, beauty is only skin deep. If we could see the soul of people, imagine how hideous some of these people would be. Imagine the politicians, the money lenders, the media. Imagine how ugly they would be. Some of these actors and rappers and singers. Can you imagine if you looked at them and you're like, oh, look how pretty they are. Look at, look at Patey Carey. I'm not going to say her name. Whatever. <laughs> look at Bianchi. Beautiful. And then imagine looking at the soul. Demonic as hell. Rotten. Rotten to the core. Oh, yeah. You'd probably look at it and freak out. I bet you wouldn't listen to their music anymore. You damn sure wouldn't go to their concerts. I'm just saying... Me too, Mouse. Me too. I can tell you this right now. Brandon gets home, and I knew it. I told him, I said, everything was fine. He goes, yeah. These people left our lives, and they left us alone. He said, I've never ran into them again. That was it. One and done. It was done. He's like, and guess what? He goes, I'm right with God. I believe it, D-Truth. Any questions before we go? We're, we're, we've, we're well past the three-hour mark, but, you know, like somebody complained, well, it's three, four, five hours of this crap. Well, don't listen, dummy. Another one said in the comment section, which I normally don't read. And I, I think I, le I left it up there. I don't take them down. To me, it's kind of like cheating, I guess. Let them say what they're going to say, unless they're just trolling. And he said, why do you do these damn live streams? I can't hear, I can't read the comments or something like that. What? And I'm like, then don't listen. I mean, well, like, don't, don't watch. People acting like, you, they, you know, you got like a gun to their head making them, come to the show, come on. <laughs> Look, comrade, you don't go to show something bad happened, like bullet to head. <laughs> what you and Gulag, not good for you or anybody. I don't have commissars or the Gestapo coming to your house, the, the NKVD or the KGB. Stasi. The Stasi. We have ways of making you listen. No. This isn't a dictatorship, fascist, communist, whatever. This is not. This is free will. All right? Jackie Hall, yes, I, it was a good story. And I do appreciate, thank you, my shout out to Brandon for doing that. And my shout out to Anna, who is Anseline's daughter, for the brace that you made me. And kiddo, I don't even know what I did with it. And I was going to wear it yesterday and give you a shout out. And I apologize. She's probably already in bed now. But that's uh, Ken's uh, girlfriend, Anseline. Um, in case you don't know who Anseline is, she's, she's a really good person. And she's got a lot of uh, good work that she's doing. Her and Ron Murphy are starting a YouTube uh, channel or podcast, whatever. And they're going to be on the show in a couple of weeks doing the Friday thing with us, me and my, my new co-hosts. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. And we almost, we have, what, 700 people? Now we're down to 600. So I guess people don't like uh, listening very much. They decided they don't like me, I guess. All right, folks, that's it for tonight. I appreciate everybody tuning in. I know everybody's probably got to get to bed. It's already almost 11 o'clock on, on a Sunday. But if you have any questions, somebody says, did Brandon's aunt remember everything that happened after she was set free? Yes, she did because she was in the background talking when I was talking to him. Brandon Coast, thank you, yes. 
Yeah, audacious Amber, you're right. People got to get up early. Like I said, I'll be up all night and then I'll be asleep and then I'll get up four or five hours and I'm ready to go. I do it every day and I start it all over like Groundhog Day. <sighs> I got payroll tonight. I got to go home and do it. And then I got to do guard checks, but I've already done my workout. So I got that done. But tomorrow's leg day. Wish me luck. Uh, there's another thing. Um, Lorena, or uh, is it is it Lorena McKenna? If Nelly's in the chat, I don't that know name sounds know. familiar. Lorena McKenna. She, I think she's a Patreon member. She has to have surgery, blood clot in her leg, oh, and she had a heart attack. So, could you please pray for her? Ristal, yes. Ron Murphy and I have talked many times. I mean, just talking, like, hey, what's up? And we'll end up talking forever, you know. Um, and yesterday when I ate dinner with uh, my dear friend Ken, was you know, we, we talked about that. Them, and he goes, oh, man, you and Ron can talk together for a long time. I was like, oh, yeah. Man, everybody was tired yesterday. Ken had this statue we had to move. It's like, oh, <laughs> dude, I watched. Say, look, say, reach out to Ken, say a prayer, whatever. Tell him he hope you're, he's okay or you're thinking about whatever because he smashed the out of his fingers. Yeah, twice. Dude, I saw it. Yeah. I mean, it was like, and he was just like, get it off, get it off. And y'all were pulling and I, it wasn't nothing I could do. I can go over there and make it go faster because it would lurch forward and probably break. Yeah. But his fingers were being just smashed into that dolly. When that was tricky because like his fingers were being smashed by, by the, like the wing of that statue. Yeah. And, and that's what could break. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was already probably broken. So I was like trying to pull it off. I was like, I don't know. I don't know how to do it without breaking it yeah and so and if i would have yanked it it would have just i would have yanked it off but it would have broke and i had to like lift it off of the the ground under the dolly at one, one point it was like that thing probably weighed what four or five hundred pounds it was ridiculous it was very ridiculous it was it was just huge heavy solid thing but um anyways yeah so folks Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for, for showing up and being in the chat. We appreciate everything you've done for us, being supporters of the show. Thank you for this Easter that we had together. Um, thank you for showing up. Um, I didn't get to tell you the, sh the story about the ship. It's a Russian friend of mine who's, you know, he's, he's actually Russian. Um, his, it's his dad's story, but it was cool. He told me. <clears throat> and I met him through another guy who's actually Russian, and so... Um, but anyway, uh, good story. We're going to get to that one. Don't let me forget. And we still got the Scarecrow story and I'm working out Carlos's story because I can, he can only type so much and then I got to read it and get it, get in, ask him questions. It's kind of hard. Um, the guy was really tore up by the cult. I call it a cult cause that's what it was. Okay. Let's be honest. So that's it. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. So. Everybody that donated, I wish I could go back and look. It's not like StreamYard where you can go and name everybody afterwards. Uh, there's a way. Hang on. Oh, man, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Jamie Brinson, Sugar Britches, Liberty 1776, Audacious Amber, Dana, Dana Dawson. Dana... I want to hear about your Panther story. Send it to me. Okay. Everybody who is telling me in the, in the chats about your stories, your different stories, send me those stories. I want to, I want to know, I want to read them. I want to, you know, let me be the judge. A lot of people say, well, I don't think it's going to be show worthy, whatever. Don't, don't, don't do that. Let me be the judge of that because you may have something there that's gold and we need to hear it. And it could be something that the spirit is moving you to tell us. Thomas Dove, thank you for that donation. Miguel Guetta, of course, obviously always there. Miguel Charles, uh, Jazz 654, uh, uh, Kate Hunter, one of our best and awesomest. Alexander Stevens, Dana again, Rita Burnett, another wonderful, awesome person there. Rita and Kate always helping out. Melissa, Eileen Purvis, thank you for pushing people to help. And, you know, because we do need to get this equipment and we do need a computer. I cannot keep doing what I'm doing in the house. It's not working. Um, and because of some of the issues that we've had going on at the house, because there are, we are, I'm going to be honest, we're under spiritual attack right now, folks. 
I know it sounds weird to people who don't understand what it's like, but believe me, it's happening. And I don't feel comfortable leaving Nellie alone. Like tonight we had somebody there with her that could be there. We have a guard. Um, so that's, you know, but I just can't, you know, like I, I'm doing a lot of shows from the house right now, and but making sure I at least come here on Sunday to be with Tony and Anthony so we can do the Sunday show. But most of this week I was at the house because – I did not feel comfortable leaving her alone. So please pray for her, pray for us, you know, everybody. Um, and some of these people that are just whatever, dude, they're ridiculous. Susie Jago, Amy Krill, 39 Shaman, Cool Hand, Madeline Chap, Samantha Phillips, Two Shadows, Kez McIntyre, Trust Jesus, author and illustrator BJ Lapierre, uh, Delana, Linda in Your Dreams, Melissa Eileen Purvis again, Sophie Dana Dawson again, Solovino, and Melissa Eileen Purvis again, Jordan Cogburn, Eddie Petch, 86, Rich Sykes, Trippin' Up on You, and Ristal. And Trippin' Up on You, if you're interested in coming on the show and talking about your story, I, there's some stuff that we could talk about that we could, you know, we could get into. So, I could, I could give some stories similar to yours, you know, that you, we can, we can go over. Anyways, thank you for, for, uh, being a part of the show. You're the best part of the show, the audience. Without you, there is no show. I'm just some chucklehead up here talking, making noise. All right. Thank you folks. We will see you again. What? Tuesday, right? Yeah. Tuesday. We don't know yet for sure if it's going to be like an hour long, uh, podcast episode or if we're just going to do the live stream. What do you guys want? Tell me right now in the audience. Tell me. T. Toey, thank you for that donation. We appreciate it. You're always, she's always late, but she manages to, like, get it. <laughs> thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah, she still comes through. Yeah, good people. Uh, you guys want live is always great. Live. You know, I'm not saying that we invented the wheel, because I've said this before. We didn't. You know, the live stream... But we did, I do believe that we had a hand in making it popular. Because when I first started doing the live stream, there were people doing it, but they weren't, it wasn't that would, I don't remember anybody that was doing it. They just stood out. It was that good. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying that we're the, we're the good guys or the best guy or whatever, but I just don't remember like a lot of people doing it and being like, well, this is impressive. You know, it was just, it wasn't, it was just, but then we started doing it and rocking it and. Now everybody's trying to do it. Everybody's doing the live stream. Even people that just have no business doing it, you know, like they're just they're just sitting there going like, "What?" And I watched a few just because it was interesting to see several of these people whose main platform is not the live stream, and they're just sitting there floundering. You know, I thought Tony Merkel did a good job. I like, but I like Tony. But I think Tony Merkel did a great job. But I th he just needs he needs moderators. And if you're listening, Tony. Get, get the mods, man, and you'll be fine because people really seem to enjoy it. And I was in the audience and I saw some of the paratroopers in there. So, yeah. But, you know, other than him, though, I don't, most of these new people or people who have these bigger shows and they're trying to do a live stream and you're just going like, what the hell are you doing, man? It's just not your wheelhouse. I mean, it's, it's, I'm not telling anybody not to research other subjects or do other things. By all means, do it. The more we know, the better. But, if it's if it's if it comes to the platforms and what you do, if it's just not your thing, it's not your thing. If we go out into the woods or go out into these areas where we think there's habitation, and it blows, I mean, then then we need to do something else. I don't think it will, because everything we've done up to this point has been a win. But you know, we might not be able to do it as good as some of these other people. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to be hell bent holler. You know, they're, they're like all up in there. You know. Um, but that's it. That's their thing. You know, that's their thing. And I'm not trying to bogart in on them or whatever. Um, but I really, I just think that, you know, we need to, to do, we need to get as much as we can to you guys. A lot of people want to do the live. So we'll, we'll probably do a live then. Because, you know, the podcast, you know, we do make uh, some money off of that too. But it's just, it's not, I'm not just, it's just like, you know, it's just an hour of us talking and I have to like say it quickly and, and say what I got to say because you only get an hour. I could make them longer, but then I'd be eating into other people, you know, so I don't want to do that, you know. So it's kind of like rushed, you know what I mean? 
Yeah. Anyways, folks, good night. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you.